Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the live coverage of round five of the FIDE World Senior Team Championship. So, we have already games underway. Uh, apologies for the slight delay, which was caused by a slightly longer ceremonial first move procedure happening in the playing hall. But now we have the games underway, and uh, we start with the S65 section. Where on board one we have uh, the match between Israel and Germany Lasker. On board one of that match we have Grunfeld against Knack. So let's get going. E4 E6, the French chosen by Rainer Knack. D4 D5, Knight C3, Knight F6. Uh, the class, so-called classical variation of the French, unlike the win hour against Bishop uh, after Bishop B4. And now Bishop G5. I mentioned some rounds ago that uh, most of the people here play e5 and one of the reasons after bishop g5 well for the some decline in uh, popularity of bishop g5 was the discovery of this strange gambit with h6 intending bishop f6 queen f6 and ed5 and i was just sacrificing the pawn i think bishop b4 and so on so but in this case, Knack sticks to the classics, d takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop e7, bishop f6, bishop f6, this is the more positional approach, gf6 being the more combative one. It was made popular uh, in the late 90s by Alexander Morozevic. He, uh, he had quite a few interesting games in this line. But bishop f6 was played, knight f3, knight d7. Normally black castles and keep some flexibility, but knight usually goes to d7 in this line. Queen d2, short castle, long castle. Bishop e7, bishop d3, and c5. So no more or less standard play by both sides. White will try to create some sort of an attack on the king side. Some ideas like g4 or h4 or knight g5, and then maybe bishop h7, and so on. Whereas black will try to counter in the center and in this way distract white from just playing for an attack. Let's move to board 2. Meister against Birnboim. We have only three moves here. Not sure if white is now thinking. Maybe because after in the normal moves after in the English opening, e3, slightly less common than g3 or knight f3, but quite possible. And now bishop is 7 Okay, maybe this is rare and that's why uh, white started thinking the idea of e3 is that if bishop b4 then knight e2 can happen uh, similar to the uh, rosolimo variation uh, in the sicilian here white with the tempo up is already in time to play knight e2 and not allow the disruption of his structure in case of bishop takes c3 so okay bishop e7 still thinking let's move to board three Kagan against Kalinchev, we have the Marozzi bind, so knight f3, knight c6, d4, g6, c4, bishop g7, bishop e3. Uh, the Marozzi, okay, there are two uh, lines, main lines in the Marozzi. One is the, uh, uh, the line played in this game, and the other one is knight f6, knight c3, d6, and now bishop e2 or f3, and knight takes d4, queen d4, and bishop g7. So this is one version, and yeah, this for example was favored by Fischer in the cases when he played the Marozzi. And the other one is this one, bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3, d6, bishop e2, castles, castles, and a knight d4. There is also the line with a5, but it's not considered very highly nowadays because of knight b5, and the knight is quite annoying on b5. So knight takes d4, bishop d4, bishop d7, f3. And the Marozzi is a very solid opening for black, perhaps even too solid, as the uh, the counterplay is very, let's say, limited. Uh, but uh, the the attraction of the Marozzi is that it has really a very simple, um, very simple um, plan that uh, that black can employ, <coughs> and that consists in putting the bishop on c6 playing a5, controlling b4, and then maneuvering the knight from f6 to c5, knight d7, knight c5. 
and ideally black would like to exchange the dark spirit bishops because uh, if you look at white pawn structure with all these pawns on light squares you see that the dark squared bishop is the important piece to control the dark squares and without it white is left only with a bad bishop and that is the let's say the let's call it strategical trap that uh, black hopes to get white into um, many inexperienced players have fallen into that trap okay let me just make some moves to show you let's say queen d2 bishop c6 something like let's say king h1 and d7 and now people let's say take on g7 and then basically black has this is the ideal uh, position for for black when he can just play on the dark squares knight can come to c5 queen can come to b6 sometimes even e5 to cover the d4 square the knight e6 knight d4 and uh, basically uh, black is playing with a good knight against a bad bishop even further uh, ideal for for black is if he can exchange his bishop for a knight and achieve a pure good knight bad bishop position but okay uh, players have learned not to fall into this and generally white avoids the exchange so for example queen d2 bishop c6 king h1 knight d7 uh, the correct move for white here is to withdraw with the bishop to e3 and keep that bishop alive so obviously this is all very theoretical a lot of uh, theory has evolved here uh, white is thinking so let's go to move four to board four we have curler against Peretz. so we have the symmetrical english c4 c5 g3 knight c6 knight f6 okay a3 bishop g7 rook b1 and if you remember i i commented on this um, line uh, when we were looking at the game of one of the players in the macedonian team uh, in s6 in this section uh, Trykovsky. and um, i noted then that no usually here black plays and should play a5 to stop white from pushing d4 b4 but again uh, as in that game black allows b4 and now goes d6 so we can get well in that in that game i mean uh, black played really badly in the opening we'll see what happens here but normally it is considered as a let's say local success for white if he manages to push through b4 in the english opening so it's still the beginning of the matches uh still opening phase uh everything to to play for uh let's move on to the next match which is england against uh belgium and uh okay let me check check uh, yeah the the uh, the, uh, the comments okay I'll just a quick one yeah adam shabalov they are playing and i will switch to the s50 section because as we started they were not uh available they're not available I'm, I'm being told that they're still not available on leeches that i'm using here so we're trying to figure out what's going on uh okay i'm glad you like the the stream from the playing hall okay thanks kevin yeah, i'm glad you think that the coverage is ideal even though uh robert dc is not of that opinion well uh lack of sponsors or other issues well let's not go into that right now okay my job here is to uh well try to illuminate the chess and not delve into the technical aspects which well they are as they are uh, so okay yeah there are some sponsors but uh, okay um, so okay uh, let's then like I said go to the match England against Belgium on board one we have John Nunn playing Jan Ruse and we have an open Sicilian knight f3 6 d4 takes takes a6 the can Sicilian and none here goes for the uh, one of the main lines there are three main lines here which is the move bishop d3 which was favored also by Bobby Fischer in the uh, um, 
in the second uh, sort of second half of his career from the second half of the 60s and in the 70s uh, here uh, the the other main move is obviously knight c3 and the third main move is the move c4 which um, probably is the critical test for the Khan variation it was also played by uh, Magnus Carlsen in his match against Vichy Anand, uh, their second match in Sochi in 2014 in a game that uh, Carlsen won after that very famous one move blunder that both players missed but nothing wrong with bishop d3 obviously now bishop c5 knight b3 bishop a7 knight c3 knight e7 so here normally white's plan is to go queen e2 bishop e3 exchange the bishops castle long and then go f4 and just uh, play the usual kingside attack so this should appeal to to none but uh, let's see if maybe uh, black can play something in the center pushing d5 or we'll just stick to typical sicilian play on the queen side with b5 and so on board two we have gur machtich apologies again for the pronunciation and uh, here we have a bogo indian d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight f3 bishop b4 bishop d2 a5 but with a mixture and some transposition to uh, uh, oh, queen's indian motifs yeah g3 b6 there they are bishop g2 bishop b7 castles castles bishop f4 yeah I, uh, the alternative is bishop g5 but this is also interesting bishop e7 and knight c3 so as usual the, the rule of thumb here is that whenever uh, in these queen's indian structures is that whenever um, white has a knight plays a knight on c3 the threat is to play something like queen c2 and take over control over the e4 square and then continue with e4 so black has to either jump knight e4 which is the probably the first reaction he should consider or the second one is to push d5 and after CDED to play this structure but here I think this is uh, a better version for uh, for white in this structure because a5 has been played already and I'm not sure how good that an idea is because when black goes c5 and wants to be active then the b5 square would be weakened additionally white has not played a move like b3 which uh, for example we discussed this with uh, Michael Adams in uh, yesterday's commentary uh, and here it's better for white not to have the move and he can even go rook c1 not having to place a move on c2 and so on so uh, i would think that knight e4 should be the reaction for black here So let's move on board three. Uh, we have Chapman against Stuer, and we have the Dutch knight f3 f5 d4. It's curious that okay d3 here is an interesting little move that just wants to give the game a completely different non-Dutch character by pushing e4. But I guess that's a matter of taste. So uh, white sticks to the Dutch d4. Uh, knight f6 g3 g6 and Ketoing b3 this is one of the better systems against the Leningrad Dutch in fact I have played it myself with quite some success it's extremely solid and uh, pretty easy to um, to uh, learn so d6 bishop b2 the idea is that the bishop on b2 exerts pressure on e5 and makes the, that push uh, well more difficult to achieve even though as we will see black manages to push through e5 so short castle short castle c6 c4 a5 knight bd2 there were some move order subtleties here which honestly i don't remember right now as i haven't revised this in quite some time uh, but i'm pretty sure that e5 early was not that good because here for example maybe there was a move like queen c2 and if knight a6 
a3 the idea of the queen on c2 is to defend the bishop so e5 is not possible because d5 knight d7 has happened in the game it's just simply losing more pawns because the bishop is defended whereas in the game after knight bd2 e5 d5 knight d7 we see that the bishop not being defended means that black will regain that pawn on e5 but that's not doesn't really mean that black has solved his problems uh, and uh, okay probably something like queen c2 queen c1 will be played and generally speaking um, the reaction for example let's just make queen c2 and then now whichever way black recaptures if he recaptures with a piece then d6 is chronically weak yeah and just uh, put something on d1 and just generally play against that pawn and in case of d takes e5 generally the reaction is to go e4 to fix that pawn on e5 and then some ideas like c5 maybe knight c4 and so on are possible so these are the general ideas for white depending how black, black recaptures and on board 4 we have Van Herk against Powach we have an English opening again English opening being played an, against an English player I don't know if that's supposed to be a compliment or a challenge but so knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, g3, bishop b4, bishop g2, castles, castles, e4, knight g5, bishop c3, b c, rook e8. This is very interesting because this is the line, uh, the famous line from the uh, Karpov-Kasparov matches. And here instead of d3, Kasparov usually played f3. And in the famous second game of the match in Seville, Karpov uncorked the great novelty e3 it's uh, still very very playable today leading to some massive complications uh, Kasparov spent more than one hour thinking on his reply here and played what is still currently considered the best uh, move in this position which is d3 uh, and he obtained good position in, in the uh, in the middle game but well uh, in time trouble he really messed it up and lost the game it's curious that at the later stage in his career, some, I think, around 15, uh, approximately 15 years after the match, when he played Sadwakasov in the 21st century, he chose D takes E4. But again, he wasn't very, very lucky with this variation because um, uh, he was worse in that game and, okay, some happily. Uh, drew so he was much better off when people were taking e takes f3 here he beat Ivanchuk in a very impressive game but ef3 has been played also lately and uh, Anand has played it for example and uh, he uh, well it leads also to very sharp play and it's act it actually it is a, a playable line he in ef3 he also beat Karpov in that match in Seville so uh, he was much better off when people were taking on f3 but not so when e3 was played against him but okay this is all a bit irrelevant because uh, white played d3 ed3 ed3 and now b6 I, if i remember correctly there was an old game by botvinik in this line uh, he was playing uh, somebody not that strong with black but actually that player with black I'll, I'll look up the game because i'm also curious about this uh, that player actually obtained pretty good play with black and i think there are some games by smyslov in this line as well so uh, so just a second i will try to find it uh, so okay there's this e4 there was this d3 move and I will try to find the games played here I don't know it seems that I have somehow misremembered something here okay I have misremembered something here because it's not exactly this position even though I'm pretty sure I have seen something similar Okay, 
can't find it right now it's not exactly like this but I remember I'll actually look for both Phoenix games in the English so that's probably faster to find the, the game I'm trying to remember uh, but Phoenix with white in the English opening so just okay a lot of games obviously but I should be able to find it yeah so it was actually against Bassman Mike Bassman played in Hastings and that game was actually after uh, a, a bit different because after Shot Castle Black played Rook E8 D3 Bishop C3 Bc E4 and now instead of Knight G5 Botwinik played Knight D4 and uh, and he was soon even I would say slightly worse. So I take stakes, take stakes, and d5. So good opening by by Mike Bassman, and uh, eventually the game ended in a draw. So okay, this is what I somewhat misremembered. So bishop d5. Uh, I want to check whether that's been played because it looks pretty direct going after the f7 pawn. Yeah, so let's see, ED, ED. So yeah, three main moves instead of B6, H6, D6, and B6, which is the least played of all. And uh, Bishop D5 actually is not such a often played move, but it has been played by Naraya, Narayanan uh, last year. And it has been played by Christiansen against uh, Gregory Kaidanov, who is playing in this tournament and uh, both times white won their games so uh, uh, it in fact it can quickly become very sharp c knight d5 cd5 h6 knight f7 this was the game christians and kaidanov king f7 queen h5 check king g8 dc dc and now bishop h6 this is all looks great and uh, but I do wonder whether there is more than a perpetual here if, if uh, black takes mm. there doesn't seem to be more than a perpetual but okay Kaidanov did not take on h6 he played bishop e6 and eventually lost so here the, the game could have ended in a in a draw with perpetual but for the time being we have uh, black thinking after bishop d5 what to do so it's quite interesting uh, dynamic start of this game uh, the belgian player going for the throat very early on so now i want to check if we have access to the s50 games and no we don't so I have already communicated that we have a problem and uh, I hope that they are trying to solve this because it's uh, it's funny that I think I checked that the games are actually going can be uh, uh, followed in the uh, on the chess 24 channel but I can't really use it for the live transmission uh, because it's a private company and well I, the special permission is think is required if we have to use uh, that that platform for transmission uh, so uh, so um, yeah okay we'll, we'll just stick to, to to these games okay i want to check again i don't know if any of you guys are Okay, guys, thanks for the nice comments. I'm reading now of, that you like the commentary. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are following the games on Chess24. Uh, um, so, okay, I'll just go over the comments while we are waiting. Let's just see something, okay. The can, okay. Yeah, Alex likes quoting Fisher, that's right. Uh, no, on Lee Chess we still don't have the uh, the games. 
so yeah okay uh, just to, to chat a little bit yeah while waiting for this to be solved well three three people on the like having commentary yeah that would be nice uh, but not always possible I guess so uh, well what can I say about it So okay, uh, okay, you guys are rubbishing each other. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, okay, you, I mean, different, obviously different tastes. How commentary should be conducted? Yeah, some people like screaming. Some people like watching bullet. Okay, so far I have commented only on classical chess and some rapid. So uh, I haven't had a chance to comment on Bullet, but I'm not sure I would even enjoy that because, uh, well, it just, I think, uh, mouse slips and, and, and pre-moves, not really my thing. Uh, even though I, I fully understand that they can be um, exciting for some people, they can be entertaining to watch. But, okay, personally, I, uh, well, I mean, I don't... Uh, don't like that stuff for example i was recently what uh, checking the some of the games between uh, carlson and pomiaschi in this uh, chesscom uh, speed chess tournament and there was a funny thing because they, they played okay carlson was black he was playing the spanish and uh, obviously in the spanish he has a knight on c6 and uh, nepomiaschi played a4 it hitting that pawn on b5 yeah and um Black played a move and uh, rook b8, and then obviously this was all pre moved. And then the game goes a takes b5, and oh, now the the only move basically for black is a takes b5. But uh, apparently, mouse slip, Carlsen played a5, okay, leaving that knight on c6 on pre. But guess Nepomiaschi's next move, knight c3. Why? Because he pre-moved knight c3. He did not expect Carlsen to mouse slip and blunder his knight on c6. He actually went uh, knight c3 pre-moving and Carlsen escaped with the knight. To still lost the position because that pawn on b5 was given up for free. But it's just these type of things are, are not my thing, okay? It's not really chess for me. I mean, why would I watch ridiculous things like a5 leaving a knight for free and then uh, this guy not taking knight pre-moving some other move? It just well it just a bit I don't know degrading and uh, not my kind of fun okay I mean I'm fine with people liking uh, whatever they like but uh, this is just a personal opinion so okay let's just move on with the uh, uh, the, uh, the comments if we have something more okay um, Bassman, okay. Yeah, bullet chess and Botvinnik. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So okay, glad. I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people agree with this, but there are also other a lot of people who would not agree and they enjoy uh, the screaming commentary and the mouse slips and the blunders. Okay, to each its own. In the meantime, let me check if they solved the, the technical problem. And uh, no, they haven't. So we just go back to the games from the S65 section. Let's go back to board one and see what happened in the uh, in the uh, Grunfeld Knack game. So after bishop d3 c5. White started already kingside play with h4 and after cd5 went knight eg5 already very direct wanting to take on h7 and for example if something like g6 maybe h5 is coming yeah so it looks like pretty dangerous uh, maybe knight f6 should be played or h6 but okay this is already for black to decide and he, okay he actually no okay i know so knight g5 he's thinking okay knight f6 is probably natural because uh, i 
it also kind of lends some support even though white can take on d4 because of the usual trick here yeah? queen d4 bishop h7 winning the queen uh, so uh, whilst we likely have to do something else maybe knight e5 and okay this can be very interesting uh, and can turn very sharp so something to, to keep an eye on black is so far okay thinking what what to play knight f6 or, or h6 board 2 we had the english after bishop e7 and white decided to go knight f3 knight c6 a3 basically uh, white is playing uh, a sicilian and uh, especially after black's next move d5 cd5 knight d5 so we have something like a Okay, depending what white does. Okay, for example, now d6 would be a reverse Scheveningen. But white also has the option of queen c2 would be a reverse Taimanov. Uh, white actually has a more active option of playing bishop b5, pinning that knight and attacking the pawn. So knight takes c3, b takes c3. And I remember analyzing this, but not in exactly this position, but a similar position when the bishop comes to d6 in one move. Yeah, so now would be black to play and then he would castle and these are really like very interesting uh, positions obviously reverse sicilian after uh, white plays d4 but black's chances shouldn't really be underestimated something like bishop d7 e4 and then maybe queen g5 can really uh, offer some attacking possibilities to white so it's something uh, well it's an interesting line but here it's inferior for black because that bishop is already on on uh, e7 sorry for black yeah so he goes queen d5 maybe queen d6 also made sense but maybe i guess he was worried about d4 threatening maybe d5 or, or d5 so he thought that he should gain a tempo with queen d5 but c4 gains a tempo for white now so where does the queen go uh, probably just drop back i guess and then what not clear what what who achieved what here okay let's see the queen drops back somewhere yeah and then if d4 uh, probably just castle no nope, no castle d5 is coming yeah but takes takes and now move the queen yeah so what black achieved by f maybe forcing c4 was that white could not take cd4 and obtain a strong pawn center and in view of black's good development even some wrecking of the structure with, by doubling the pawns of c6 is not a great problem so maybe this is uh, maybe okay it was a nice move by black to to go queen d5 okay let's move board three ah we had actually some transformation which when i was talking about that huh. Uh, white tries to avoid but not in this game so what happened here after f3 a5 is that white played knight d5 and normally that's not a move white plays unless he can follow up with something concrete or obtain a concrete advantage for example knight d5 makes sense if white can recapture on d5 with a piece so let's just say something like bishop a3 i'll just some make random moves to to show the idea okay need knight d5 now and if knight d5 then maybe queen d5 yeah it's in this position doesn't do much because black plays bishop c6 and and it's still quite solid but um, there is always the difficult question how to recapture on d5 yeah ed5 is uh, positionally the most desirable recapture because it opens the file and makes d7 pawn backward and weak but normally what black tries to do now is he's quick to by to push the e pawn and then uh, even push d5 and, and just eliminate everything so that's why i'm surprised that white played knight d5 here and pretty sure it's not a good move because we are still in theory and this is not the theoretical move because after knight takes d5 cd5 a4 and black has absolutely no problems whatsoever uh, add to this that the dark squared bishops are exchanged queen d4 f6 and if you compare uh, neither bishop is great okay because uh, uh, the uh, white's bishop is limited by the, uh, the 
white's own pawns whereas black's bishop is limited by his opponent's pawns yeah so this uh, pawn structure from g2 to d5 is nicely limiting black's bishop as well uh, but if let's say uh, it somehow comes to some sort of an end game it will still be white with a slightly worse bishop uh, and again it's about the dark squares so it's black who controls the dark squares e5 c5 and some ideas include like let's say queen a5 rook fc8 and play on the queen side it will be also important who gets to control the c file but what's for certain here is that black doesn't really have problems so somewhat surprising choice by white in the in the opening but uh well leading immediately to problem free position for black and i have to add that i think kalinchev has won all his games here i can check that i'll check that very quickly um, and the way he's been playing is like okay i mean just pretty solid um no, actually one draw. One draw and the draw was against against the Macedonian player Stoshevsky. But he won all, everything else. And um, he's been winning in this unassuming way uh, when uh, it was his opponents who would just uh, commit these mistakes and he would just uh, scoop them. So, uh, interesting let's see let's see if we get another type of game in similar fashion so board four okay so we had the english d6 d3 and bishop e6 okay this is still strange development by black and by the time invested i would say that this is certainly an over the board improvisation I can't say it's a good one because I don't think it is as putting the bishop on e6 like this is, is strange for example now uh, uh, it's uh, quite possible to go b5 and uh, make that knight bad forever because it's okay it's, it's on the rim and it's not doing anything and it's not getting back into the game anytime soon especially if for example if white continues with e4 stop d5 and then how is the knight okay even if black goes b6 knight b7 where does the knight go from there so that's one possible idea and another possible idea in these positions especially that uh, when you get a bishop on e6 enticing you to do this is the putting the knight on the rim himself knight h3 it's a common idea in the english to get the knight to f4 and then exert more pressure on d5 and here it even works better because there is also the option to take the bishop so we have uh, we have this uh, two what look to me pretty promising possibilities for white so i think here the opening went white's way for sure so how are how is the game how is the match going progressing okay on board one white is threatening okay black played knight f6 so we will be getting something sharp unless we have some sort of quick simplification but i don't see it for now so on board two we had uh, okay black play queen d6 provoking this uh, c4 which seems to be working okay for him on board three <coughs> <clears throat> Kalinchev got a problem free position immediately and on board four Köhler had has this uh, uh, pretty good position and okay bc5 is he going after the pawn or is there some sort of tactics here so what can black play here yeah if dc5 rook b7 is queen if queen a5 probably just bishop d2 i suppose and then uh, b7 is hanging and cd is a threat maybe black needs to play something like b5 and then it's becoming sharp okay then there is some justification in that bishop getting to, to e6 so okay this is obviously critical but also sharp yeah, and don't forget white is not developed so maybe okay 
uh, we will see what what the players come up with but this looks pretty sharp so the match is okay already we have some contours of uh, some more defining moments yeah in the games uh, the next match England against Belgium let's see how this proceeded and just as I said that here that White's plan is to go Queen E2 Bishop E3 John Nunn goes to disprove me and goes Queen H5 and in fact this is a common motive when the Knight cannot come to F6 the Queen is obviously in a very good attacking position on H5 and it cannot easily be chased away because G6 just the weak creates these bad weaknesses on the king side and that Bishop is already far away from from the king side so black played d6, bishop g5, pinning the knight, knight c6, long castle, queen c7. So this is... Uh, um, so this is already uh, uh, shaping up to be a pretty sharp, sharp Sicilian, which likely uh, is in Nan's favor here. So... I guess natural would be to go f4, maybe just prepare it with king b1, maybe centralize the rook. Uh, good options here for white, I think. And uh, I think a good opening for, for white. Port 2, what happened after knight c3 is that black played the move I was saying that he should play. Knight e4, queen c2, take on c3, now d6, rook fd1 and knight d7. Typical Queen's Indian stuff uh, with that pawn already on a5. So now 91. Usually in these positions, what uh, White is trying to do is to push d5 and shut that bishop on b7. Yeah, but here, okay, Black is should be fine because let's say d5. Yeah, and then the bishop should somewhere retreat. I don't know where. Let's say d2. And black can continue even with f5, the knight can come to c5, the bishop will draw back to c8. And this is all like a favorable a king's Indian type of position that black is getting. So white went for knight e1 and this is already a, a move that attempts to dry the game. Dry it up as... Um, after the exchange of the bishops, well, less pieces are on the board, less problems for black, also less problems for white, so it's just some calm waters and, uh, well, unless anybody blunders something, it should kind of go towards a draw. Board 3, we had the Dutch, and here what happened was after queen c2 d5, white did not play e4, which I was actually expecting him to, but played knight e1. And uh, if, if this is like what I've noticed when looking at the Dutch is that if white does not challenge these two pawns and allows black to kind of consolidate, then black has a fine game. So that's why I don't really like this knight e1. So knight a6 played, threatening maybe some knight before, a3 and now knight c5. And uh, again, now already e4, maybe made by f4, and it's not that uh, great because the knight is much more passive on, on e1. So I think here, okay, uh, white played rook d1. But I already have the impression that black actually has a good position already. So I think white white misplayed this, missed the opportunity on move 12, and now black is doing all right. So, you know, sometimes a bluff in the opening can work like this. Okay, you play a, a dodgy line, which if uh, your opponent doesn't know how to punish, you suddenly obtain a good position. Mm, but it's a risk. Yeah, if the opponent knows how to react, then you end up in some unpleasant position. So... Uh, well, everybody decides on their own how much they want to risk. It's okay, queen b6 played. Okay, I guess queen e7 was also possible. But generally, black is fine here. <laughs> and on board 4, we had this sharp stuff. So, after knight d5, 
CD5, 95 was played, so not H6 as in the game that we mentioned between Christiansen and Kaidanov, but 95. But this looks really dangerous. So, okay, that be, what happens? Let's say after F4, Knight G6, and now Queen H5. Let's say. Or f5, I don't know. Uh, or maybe, okay, let's say queen h5, threatening mate. And if, okay, maybe not mate, but just, okay, and if h6, then knight f7, king f7, f5. Wow, this can quickly be turned out to be some sort of a miniature. Okay. So, okay, what this teaches us is that if you put your opponent under early pressure, in the opening, uh, they may not react well, and uh, in some cases you can win quickly. In fact, I was just yesterday I was reading this. Uh, I think it's a classical book in the world of tennis, which is called "Winning Ugly" by Brad Gilbert. Uh, I remember Gilbert from the eighties, as I have followed tennis ever since then. And uh, one of the things he he wrote in the book is that uh, he explained how players are not uh, warmed up in the beginning of a match so he one of his advices was um, to warm up properly he gives details how to do that and then take advantage obviously he was speaking about club players yeah, not about pros uh, and then at the beginning of the match when your opponent is not sufficiently warmed up you take advantage of that by breaking him or getting a good foothold in the match and this reminded me of the fact that uh, uh, if you follow some of the uh, time uh, information that Fischer and Karpov and even Kasparov uh, the time they spent in the opening you would be surprised that they spent more time than you would expect them to and uh, you could guarantee that they knew the opening pretty well but they still spent uh, quite some time in the in the opening and the reason for this is exactly what we are seeing here they were getting their brain ready for the game so they are they were checking lines rechecking lines slowly even though they knew the move so they were revising things in their head and they were warming up their brain for later <coughs> when they would be on their own and uh, when they would have to calculate lines so um, this was obviously possible in those times when uh, players had more time uh, uh, on the on the clock for the for the game so uh, they could invest some of the time for example uh, all these three players that i mentioned they played with the, the, the old time control of two hours and 30 minutes for 40 moves uh, and in fact, one of uh, Botvinnik's rules was that for the first 15 minutes uh, in the game, you should spend half an hour, which leaves you with two hours for 25 moves, which is quite good. Uh, unfortunately, this advice is probably no longer applicable in modern times because we usually play the games at much faster time controls. And this also means that probably some different type of preparation should be done. Uh, you just use your imagination or whatever you think I mean based on what I just said how you should prepare and warm up your brain uh, for a game but going back to the to the game uh, Van Herk against Povach we see that uh, Black was caught out in the opening and um, he was well did not react properly because he was not uh, well calculating properly and evaluating possibly and and immediately ends up in, in in trouble so we may see a quick result on on board four in the match uh, belgium england in favor of the belgians so uh just to check some uh to check the comments yeah while we are 
waiting for maybe the games okay uh, okay Atacama Desert hello Enrique uh, so Struga yeah uh, I would suggest yeah visiting it's a very very nice place both Struga and Ohrid very pretty sit towns or well Ohrid a bit bigger and uh, yeah the nature is very pretty and uh, there are many nice places on the coast so I would warmly recommend visiting yes in Ohrid Ohrid used to be the uh, the capital of Tsar Samuel's uh, well empire at the time and there is a fort on top of the uh, in this in the town which you can visit you have a very nice view from there so uh, it's very very nice um, so uh, Smyslov yeah about Smyslov in fact Smyslov was very very original when it came to the openings apart from having lines named after him but he had really he was really a thinker and uh, in fact I I remember there was a time when I was uh, going over his games uh, from the book. Uh, I mean, I don't know how it's translated in in English, but it's basically a collection of his games with his comments. I read it in Russian. It's Letopis Shachmatnova Tvorchestva. I don't know how that goes in English, but basically it's of games with his comments. Uh, and uh, I paid particular attention to his games with Black because he really had a lot of... Uh, variations that you would not expect let's say from a classical player of or just some original ideas I remember I, I, um, uh, I was looking at this line in the Nimso Indian in the classical Nimso Indian the Rubinstein variation when uh, you know in this line maybe I can just show it while we are yeah let's say something like this yeah I'll just show the line I have in mind so Nimso Indian Bishop B4 E3 short castle Bishop d3, d5, knight f3, c5, short castle. And for example, nowadays everybody's playing the so called Karpov variation, let's say cd, ed, dc, bishop c4, and b6. But there are many lines here, and uh, the, 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 the line Smyslov invented, and I think he introduced this at the uh, 1959 uh, uh, candidates tournament in. Uh, which was held in Yugoslavia in uh, Bled, Zagreb, and Belgrade. Here he played d c four, bishop c four, and queen e seven. And this is quite a flexible line, and it's quite interesting because uh, Black gives the option of developing knight c six, but also developing knight d seven, and also developing bishop d seven and bishop c six, depending on what White does. So this is what was one of the lines that I was actually analyzing and had it in my repertoire never got to play it but uh, this was just like I said one of the uh, ideas that Smyslov had in the opening so uh, if you wanna sometimes if you need inspiration uh, especially with black what to do check check Smyslov's games yeah uh, so let's go uh, further comments oh Nimzo Indian, yeah? Uh, okay, I can't say much, but there won't be a Nimzo Indian. I'll keep you guessing. Uh, but I think you'll like what I propose. Uh, okay, so let's see. You're welcome, Deepak. Uh, yeah, the Karpov line. Yes, the Karpov line is, of course, the pop most popular nowadays it has been played in world championship matches Anand played it in his match with Gelfand but it was funny that when he ran into problems in that line he went for something very similar to the Smyslov variation and uh, he prepared the line with bishop d7 when the Nimzo Indian was played for the second time so this was another line that I was actually looking and, 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 and preparing so you see you can you can be original and uh, just digging up some old games and obviously checking with with modern computers um, let me quickly check if we have any luck with the other games and no we don't so we are still stuck nothing from the S uh, 50 section and uh, okay in fact 
we've been here for an hour and perhaps it's a good idea if I had if I took a break because I just want to go down to in the to the playing hall and see what's going on because uh, the games have been going on for for more than an hour and we, we can't follow them so uh, I think I think I'll get a I have a break I'll just let me leave one I'll just leave this position on the board and so you can follow it uh, and uh, before I go so if four has been played so it may be just a quick win for white here so I'll take a quick break I'll just pop down to the playing hall and hopefully I, I manage to do something about this problem yeah so thanks for being patient uh, well and uh, I'll be back soon
Ouais. Là, mes accents. Welcome back to the live commentary of round 5 of the World Senior Team Championship. As you likely noticed, uh, the problem with the transmission has been solved. And uh, now we can uh, take a look at the games in the S50 section. For World 1, we have the derby between USA and England. England won. And uh, it will probably take us too long if we start looking at the games from the beginning. So let's just concentrate on the game, on the uh, situations on the board that we have at this moment. Uh, so on board one we have Adams against Shabalov, uh, a very interesting matchup which started with the Rosolimo Sicilian. And uh, here we have uh, Shabalov uh, sacrificing a pawn, true to his style, if you remember his game from yesterday. Uh, against um, Dishman uh, where he turned the losing position into a winning one thanks to his wild uh, tactics uh, I was curious to see how Adams would deal with this type of style uh, whether he would be looking to tame it from the start or just play normally and uh, from what we can observe here it seems that Adams was playing normally but that also meant that Shabalov obtained the uh, some sort of attacking chances thanks to this knight on f4 the very strong bishop on b7 and now his last move was queen f6 um, increasing some pressure on the uh, f file and in fact now uh, taking on e6 i think would be pretty bad because there is this tactical shot knight g2 and mm, there is a catastrophe happening on f3 so uh, Adams is thinking and in fact uh, it's, a, it's a position that to my mind is more in Shabalov's style than Adams's but that's even a reason more to see how uh, a world-class player like Adams can will deal with such a situation. Uh, I'm not sure if a move like bishop e4 to eliminate that bishop is working at all. But something like bishop takes e4, rook e4, queen f5 seems to be okay for, for black. Yeah, very good knight, good structure, so uh, looks okay for for black. So it's interesting to see what, uh, what Adams does here. For now, I don't think there are any threats that black has, so maybe a move like rook a7 is possible. But then just bishop c6, I suppose, so... Okay, I don't know. We will see. But sharp position, I think, and... Uh, and, uh, well, chances for, for both sides. Let's see board 2, Kaidanov against Ems. Okay, only 13 moves and Ems is already in massive time disadvantage. So here we can check the game from the start because it's only 15 moves. So some Gioco Piano, short castle and now B4. And the subtlety of, of this move with early short castle is that for example if short castle black can play the lines with D5. But Kaidanov goes B4, bishop is 7 short castle d5 so m sticks to the plans with d5 ed5 knight d5 b5 knight a5 going after the bishop there is ample compensation in, in case like knight takes c5 because there is bishop f6 there are problems with the bishop on c4 the knight on e5 so and this is not recommended so bishop takes d5 queen d5 c4 has been played uh, and now Queen can go to different places, M chose d8, bishop d2 attacking the knight on a5, b6 and knight e5. So why decided to take that pawn uh, on, uh, on e5? And usually black gets compensation but the, the practical problem is how to actually do it. Yeah, in which way does, does he go bishop f6, does he go bishop d6? depending which diagonal he wants to control. Does he not touch the knight and go maybe bishop b7? 
Does he maybe go a6? Yeah. So a lot of options. So I'm not surprised MC is spending a lot of time, but this is not very practical because it's like I said, the morning move 13, and uh, MC has only 24 minutes left uh, on his clock to reach move 40, and that's already something like less than a minute per move. Okay, and if we add the 30 seconds, then it's a bit over a minute per move, and already, and it's early middle game, so. I think not not a good situation for for black here from that respect. Board three, Fleer against Elvest. Okay, this was a, a popular line in the Rubinstein Nimzo Indian. White's last move B3, trying to stop these hanging pawns from advancing. But uh, this move F4 means that. Uh, White also has a weakness. Normally, that pawn is on F, pawn is on f2. When playing these against his hanging pawns, but the pawn being on f4 means that uh, well, Black should be fine in this position, as uh, as the pawn on e3 is a weakness that White must look after. Uh, the immediate threat for White is something like knight a4. Attacking that pawn on c5, and that's why b3 was played because without b3, black can play c4. But now b3 and the threatening knight a4. So we will see <coughs> how black deals with this threat. I guess he's considering moves like pushing maybe in the center with d4, maybe pushing with c4, maybe jumping knight b4. Well, many, many ideas. For black and okay he's already thinking and here we have a similar situation to the uh to to the to board two and again it's black who is uh, uh, who has spent a lot of time uh, for 25 moves he has exactly 25 minutes left so that's a minute and a half if we add those 30 seconds per move to reach move 40 and that's again uh, still not a very serious time trouble but I would be worried if I were with that time situation in a game of mine especially as the position is uh, still very complex and a lot of uh, a lot of options are possible so here we have a mirror situation to the previous uh, board here the American player has uh, little time and on board 4 we have Novikov against Davies, Nigel, you remember we had Nigel as a guest in, in round one and he essayed the Benoni in that game and won, but in a, such a responsible yeah, situation as, as playing the Americans for a, in a crucial match, he decided to stick to the Queen's Gambit decline. And he's, it appears that he's doing quite well, as, uh, well, he has a very comfortable position. In fact, uh, Black is better structurally, uh, as he can play against this isolated queen's pawn on d4. Uh, White's last move was rook f e1, uh, and um, I don't see anything wrong with improving the knight, knight f6, and establishing firm control over the d5 square. So, good development for Davis here against Novikov. So the match is still uh, somewhat in the. Uh, in the balance, no clear advantage uh, to any team, even though on the individual boards there are some advantages, especially time advantages uh, on boards 2 and 3. Let's move on to the next match, which is Montenegro against Iceland. After Montenegro lost to um, America, they have won all their matches and now they're back up on board 2. So, uh, on board one we have Nikčević against Olafsson, uh, this was a Queen's Gambit accepted, and uh, from, well, it appears that Black has uh, been out of the opening with quite a satisfactory position, again an IQP position, and good control for Black of the square in front of it. So, very stable knight on b4, very good bishop on c6, bishop pair, which white can eliminate at any point but uh, that uh, still won't solve the uh, problem with the structure which is the isolated queen's pawn so 
uh, long term black has good prospects here uh, let's move to board two uh, we have Peterson against Pajkovic and we had a Slav semi Slav with uh, Catalan ideas a typical situation when uh, white sacrifices a pawn whether that be in the semi Slav or in the Catalan playing g3 in order to obtain a full center uh, and uh, space in the center thanks to those pawns but here somehow black managed to get his knights to the queen side not getting in the way let's say on d7 or f6 uh, especially the knight on b4 is annoying because it can come to d3 the knight on b6 is good to cover the to defend the uh, pawn on c4 the bishop on b7 is somewhat passive but okay can't have all maybe a5 bishop a6 can also lend more support to the pawn on c4 whereas on the other hand uh, what white will try to do here uh, is either to, to he needs to try to do something with the central pawns whether that be the pawn break with d5 and or e5 even though for the time being neither looks too promising or somehow to maneuver uh, with the pieces maybe some bishop h3 to target the e6 pawn weakened by this move f6 sometimes ideas like g4 g5 can work sometimes even moving the knight and then f4 g4 f5 just starting advancing because if you notice uh, black's king side is pretty vacant as all his light pieces are on the queen side only the bishop is on e7 so this is quite a complex middle game position uh, the situation on the clocks is more or less equal 40 odd minutes for each player but it's still early in the game move 14 now white is thinking on move 15 and uh, the position being complex as it is we may as well uh, witness some time trouble here as players will continue to spend time Podlesnik against Arnason we had a uh, four knights uh, which uh, uh, led to a position type of a position that can also arise from the anti-Berlin with d3 when white pushes f4 and there is an exchange it e4 bishop f4 black has the bishops but white has the better structure these beautiful pawns all on light squares limiting black's bishop but black is obviously solid and um, uh, even though white opened the f-file it's well uh, somehow I, I have found these positions always to be somewhat easier for white because he can maneuver behind these nice pawns for example something like let's say knight c4 knight e3 okay maybe the bishop draws back somewhere there then the knight maybe goes to f5 or to d5 okay d5 probably not but f5 and just to put some pressure on the king side and black is solid he can go maybe bishop e7 and g6 to stop that but then somehow f6 is a little bit loose and uh, uh, well it's it's this type of maneuvering game uh, objectively it should, it's fine for for black but i just have found that these positions are somewhat easier to play with white thanks to this like i said nice uh, pawn structure and some space advantage thanks to this pawn on e4 the time is also around balanced 40 minutes 40 40 something yeah 42 40 for white 46 for uh, uh for black and uh yeah well, we will see how things progress from here and on board four we have uh Thoralson against miljanic it was a french defense the taraj variation but here obviously with a great in a great version for white who has the pair of bishops for very little compensation for black uh, in fact the only thing that black can uh, boast about is that for now white cannot advance with his queenside majority because the rook on the c file controls the c4 square so c4 cannot be played but the, uh, there are concrete problems now the pawn on b7 is hanging black probably needs to defend it with something like rook d7 or rook c7 because i mean putting a knight on d5 is perhaps 
I don't know. It's difficult to say if it's the lesser evil, for example, bishop d5, ed5. And again, white has free uh, play against the IQP here. But normally one weakness is not enough to win. So maybe it's a, it's a practical decision that uh, will... Uh, make white think whether to go for that exchange or to keep the bishop pair but then the bishop will not be that greatly placed on d2 and if, the, if it goes to d4 maybe at some point uh, it can be chased away with e5 not immediately obviously but uh, at, at some point yeah um, well or be exchanged with bishop c5 yeah so it could be an interesting decision uh, well, to, to play knight d5, but uh, it's well, I mean, in order to play like this, black needs to have confidence in his defensive abilities because uh, he will be defending until the end of the game. So he needs to be certain that he can hold it. But uh, that applies to, to this position as well. And it's just a you know, a case of choose your, your torture. So white is definitely better here, yeah. So, uh, how is the match going? Uh, well, on board one, uh, okay, we've had some developments. In fact, after queen e2, black decided to exchange on e4 and go queen b6. And now we have opposite colored bishops. That's, well, can work for for black because the bishop is attacking the pawn on d4 and white cannot defend it with the with the, his own bishop but that also uh, makes the d5 push easier to achieve so i'm not sure this was the best solution but okay still around balanced board two very complicated white played knight a4 probably he's He's going after the pawn on c4 with this, not concentrating on the king side for now, but uh, wants to exchange the defender of the pawn on c4 and then take it. And if white manages to do so, then it's just a great position for him because black won't have any compensation uh, for the weak pawn on c6. So let's see if that works out. Yeah. Uh, board 3, we had this slightly... Okay, queen g3 has been played, slightly more pleasant position for for white and on board for s s better position for white yeah so things are going pretty okay for the Icelandic team uh, let's check the next match which is Slovakia I think against Italy on board one we had uh, Merva against David it was a classical Sicilian the Rouser attack and white's last move b4 uh, it's a possible way for stopping black from playing b4 but always needs to be played with certain care because uh, while it does stop b4 it also weakens white's king on the queen side so it's always a double-edged uh, position and depends on the other factors in the position whether it's good or not so I don't know how good it is here to be honest looks okay for, for white at first sight because all these pieces are pretty far from inflicting any damage on the queen side but <clears throat> and white may be pretty quick with say let's say h4 g1 g5 so pretty sharp Sicilian here yeah some ideas may include the sacrifice d5 or obviously after let's say b a b yeah and at some point maybe d5 and take on b4 okay not immediately because there's knight d5 but Maybe bishop a6 first, uh, but then b5 is hanging, bishop c6 maybe. It's it's complex, definitely complex. Oh yeah, I would say chances for both sides. Godena against Motus. What we had was a Tarash French, which somehow <laughs> quickly transposed to a, to an Alapin. Let's check quickly how that went. Knight d2, bishop e7, c3, c5. DC knight f6 oh black didn't want to take ed queen d5 knight f3 still ignoring the pawn and now b4 I'm not sure this uh, bishop b2 b6 I'm not sure that like black obtains something for the pawn because 
the white is well developed and uh, I'm not sure where does the compensation come from so I don't know maybe, but the point may be that that uh, white can't really release any of the tension let's say CB AB yeah and then black hopes to regain the pawn so likely some concrete calculation needs to be done but even something like let's say just castles BC and now let's say B5 I think it gives white uh, a good advantage not a pawn up but just just <laughs> a protected past pawn yeah on B5 so this looks promising for white but uh, you're probably noticing the times the time on the clock left to both players it's moved 10 I think white thinking about move 11 he has 14 minutes left that's good enough but you know yesterday with such play he beat Nedef with black so uh, don't underestimate Godena yeah objectively he's he, he, he's better here Board 3, Dobrotka against Ortega. Okay, classical stuff here. IQP, dead blockade, bad bishop for white, passive passive position. Obviously, black is enjoying this a lot. Okay, solid advantage. And, uh, well, difficult defensive task ahead. If I had to bet, I would bet on black winning this, but uh, we will see. So, oh, okay, just a second. Why did not. Ah, okay. So if bishop a5, then uh, rook a8, and then rook a2. So uh, rook c1 is played, and black is thinking. And on board 4, Borgo against Kantoric. Some English opening with Dutch motifs. b5 is the last move. Borgo having much less time than his opponent, but. The position looks pretty sharp. Okay, the knight is hanging, so... Uh, now the question is... Yeah, probably black should take, because, I mean, if knight c5, bc... Then uh, the knight cannot take on d3 because of cb7. So likely cb will be played. And then white decides, does he take with a pawn? Which looks a bit sterile, I would say. Because it just kills off any dynamism on the queen side but probably he'll take with a knight still keeping this tension in the center maybe now white uh, black plays knight c5 attacking this pawn so uh, I don't know it can be sharp let's say take there take there pretty sharp but uh, I would say both are fine So unclear position, but uh, the Italians have promising positions on boards uh, two and three, in spite of the time problems by Godena. So the match is looking okay for them. Let's move on to the fourth match: North Macedonia Alkaloid against Poland. Board one: we have Kirill Georgiev against Jacek Gdanski, and we have a, it was an English opening and a pretty technical position for for Kirill which he is enjoying I'm pretty sure better structure weak pawn on d6 for black excellent bishop and uh, a huge time advantage on the clock even though more moves have been played compared to the other games it's move 22 and uh, white has 1 hour and 11 minutes whereas black has 25 but more important is that black is actually has a problematic position he may well be able to defend it yeah let's say something some decent looking moves yeah and then the IQP is well defended especially as white has a dark squared bishop and cannot attack it the knight is stable on c6 controlling the squares in the center it certainly is defensible but but not pleasant obviously Kirill will circle around Okay, so black played rook a8 instead of rook f8, but okay, changes very little. So 
So on board two, the game finished. It was a draw between Sapis and Nedef. What happened was a king's Indian. Bishop e2, bishop g5. Ah, and now we had this very, very old line uh, against the Averbach system. c5, d5, h6, bishop f4, e6. I remember looking at this line in the 80s. There were some great Kasparov games uh, there. He was playing this line with black. Usually black gets compensation, but it's it's not a popular line nowadays. Okay, funny that Nedev uh, brought it up, but he seems to have made a draw without problem. So takes, takes, bishop d6, rook e8, knight f3, taking on c5 is dangerous. So knight f3, queen b6, targeting b2. Yeah, bishop b8, rook b8, queen c2. But this is obviously uh, black has excellent compensation because there are many lines when the king's Indian when black sacrifices a pawn in order to obtain an unopposed dark squared bishop. And here white gave up his own dark squared bishop, so it's uh, it's uh, well, it's definite compensation. So knight h5 played, threatening knight f4, g3. Bishop g4, h3, take on c3. Okay, this is just uh, uh, well simplification. Yeah, uh, queen c3, take on f3, take on f3, knight f6, and black will regain the pawn with a pretty dead equal position. Yeah, after let's say short castle, take on e4, bishop e4, rook e4, and this is just a, a draw. So, 17 moves, players barely spent any time, so, well, I guess a good draw for, for, for Black, even though he was the higher rated player, but in a team match, draw with Black is usually fine. Board 3, we have Stanoyoski against Fliss, and this is the hugest rating difference, but it does not really show on the board. Uh, well, Stanowski is rated 23, 50, 51. He's a grandmaster, but okay, lost some rating. Whereas Fliss is a candidate master, rated 1948. So I'm pretty sure uh, Alkaloid hoped to, to uh, let's say, capitalize on, on this board because obviously white pieces and a huge advantage in rating and title. But the, the position as it is, well, does not really give much, I think, to white. Because, okay, we have these opposite colored bishops. But on the other hand, okay, maybe there are, there are concrete problems. Because bishop h6 is threatened and queen e5 is threatened. So maybe there are concrete problems here. How does white, how does black go about this? Hmm. Otherwise, it would be a good position for 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 black because just okay symmetrical structure weaknesses for both sides on the queen side opposite colored bishops seems to be okay but how does black defend the pawns? Well, not clear. Yeah, so maybe if he cannot defend, he needs to decide which pawn to give up. And most likely he should keep the pawn on e5, yeah. So maybe just defend it and give up the pawn on h6, go knight e8. So pawn down, but well, opposite colored bishops, that extra pawn is an h pawn. So yeah, definitely some okay. Definitely winning chances for white, but it's not going to be easy. So maybe I'll call it our getting what they want on this board, especially on board 4, it was a drawn game, again, very short draw, 13 moves, let's just quickly check it, e4, c6, knight, c3, d5, knight, f3, takes, takes, knight, f6, queen, e2, takes, takes, queen, d5, queen, f4, queen, f5, d3, <coughs> if white wants to play, he usually sacrifices that pawn on c2, goes queen, e3, but apparently he was not against the draw here, d3, takes on f4, knight d7, d4, g6, bishop g7, knight e5. Okay, mass exchanges and just a draw, okay. Nothing really happened in this game. So, if 
North Macedonia Alkali want to keep up with the leaders. All hope is on boards one and three, but not going to be easy at all. They are both they are pressing on both boards, but it's uh, uh, well, it's going to be tough. At least, most likely, they will have a pawn up on board three, but it's not going to be easy at all. So we had this roundup of the top four boards in the uh, in the S50 section, but and we actually had a result on, on uh, in the match USA England, and that's a draw between Novikov and Davies. Let's just quickly go to that one. So uh, okay, rook f1, knight f6, the move I just like, proposed, bishop b1, knight eight, queen c2, queen b6. And a draw. Well, surprising offer, I would say, because black can safely play this forever. Yeah, against that pawn. Uh, yeah, I mean, okay, he can't play knight d5 because uh, this is annoying. But there are other moves that he can try. Yeah, I mean, uh, just put maybe a bishop on d5, exchange some pieces. I think this was premature and, in a way, letting a bit the initiative in the match because when you look, you know, at the match as a whole. You're looking at whole, all boards and you see, okay, I'm pressing a little bit there, I'm pressing a little bit here, and as a general uh, impression that you get from the match when you observe it from the side, is uh, you're thinking, and then when the players are also looking, okay, say, okay, we are pressing, we are doing good, we are better, and so on. It psychologically it just gives, the, uplifts the team. Uh, I have coached, uh, well, strong teams, weak teams, and uh, at Olympiads and uh, European Championships, European Club Cups, and uh, well, I, I have some experience with uh, coaching teams, and uh, this is important, like, uh, this is important as, you know, when you have some, some pressure in any position, even if it's not concrete or anything, you just want to keep it going, because it also puts pressure on the whole team, uh, the opponent's team. Okay, they are seeing, okay, my guy is suffering, okay, the other guy is suffering, okay, I have a good position, but they are suffering, maybe one of them loses, then I must try, but I don't have a good enough position. So, a lot of factors at play, so I think this was premature from, from Davies, but okay, what to do. Um, now we can switch to the S65 section, and let's pick up where we left off from this game one Herk Polach, which I said, which we left off at f4, uh, and I said that, uh, well, it can be a miniature, so white, black played h6 instead of knight, knight g6, fe5 was played, hg5, queen f3, attacking f7, um, okay, queen f3, rook f8, and now queen h5. So the idea, I, I, I assume, is that not immediately queen h5, okay, because after g6, queen g5, queen g5, bishop g5, the rook is still on e8 and regains the pawn, and in fact, it wins maybe another one. So what white did is that he first lured the rook to f8 and now played queen h5, yeah, attacking that pawn on g5. So now g6 just loses a pawn. So uh, how does uh, well black play here? Not an easy position for black, definitely. So like I said, it's it's uh, it's a very problematic position for for them. So let's go backwards. Uh, Chapman against Stewart. It was the Dutch, and obviously something big has happened here. We left off at the position after queen b6. White played bishop c3. The idea is to do something like, let's say, queen b2 and, and put pressure on e5. Uh, e4. Take on g7. Take on g7. Check on c3. King g8 and knight c2. Okay, e4 is normally uh, desirable for, for black because it shuts that bishop on g2. But here, I'm not so sure about it because all these pieces are stuck on the queen side and uh, some f okay not f3 immediately okay but at some point f3 or something can maybe open the game and lead for a quick 
approachment of the white pieces towards the king. But it's pretty far fetched, but I don't know, just the impression I get. So bishop e6 and b4 now. Okay, a b a b, knight a4, queen e5, attacking that bishop, c5, and now knight e4. Okay, this is nice because the idea is to go rook d6 and uh, well unless black has something well, he may just be lost so it's such a quick turn of fortunes here knight f6 also being a threat apart from rook d6 bishop c4 okay bishop c4 but now just uh, rook d6 knight f6 just looks devastating yeah or maybe even just I don't know, rook d7, rook f7, maybe takes, takes, knight g5. Mm. Okay, yeah, white is pulled for choice, but pretty sure it's winning. So, fantastic turnaround for the English team here. So, it's it should be winning. And it's in a way equals out the, or balances out, yeah, the, the problems they have on board four. Board two, okay, something drawish here, as we said after knight one. Some wood was chopped. Bishop f6, knight f3, rook e8, e4, e5, all take on e5, and f3. Okay, this is just uh, well, uh, heavy pieces on the board, no problem for either side, so we expect some sort of further wood chopping and a draw. And on board one, let's see none doing his Sicilian magic what happened here is that okay queen c7 I, I mentioned rook h1 is one of the options so king f8 yeah if black has to make a move like king f8 then definitely things are not going well for for him uh, in the in the Sicilian I suppose he didn't want to castle because of some e5 but uh, but well I don't know what takes takes now we're just I don't know bishop g6 if hg but yeah it looks scary but it's not losing I mean yeah for sure as uh but king f8 it just can't be good I mean just uh, just pretty bad so f4 f6 I guess this was the idea but I mean really it was worth it rook f1 obviously intending just to mate quickly so bishop d7 e5 check on e3 king b1 d5 the idea of e5 was to free the e4 square for the knight so i expect something like knight e4 here mm, even though it's possible to start with taking on e5 and this okay move 15 yeah it looks like a typical sicilian massacre which none has had plenty in his career so white will win here i predict so likely that the wins by none and chapman will and the draw on board two will win the match for the english and on board one let's see israel oh what happened here with germany so king b1 was where we left off queen c7 was played queen e2 h6 95. Uh, this is a common theme in these positions because hg hg is never really a, an issue because the knight is hanging and if the knight moves queen h5 follows and mate on the h file so that knight never really hangs bishop d6 attacking the knight f4 supporting it knight d5 attacking that pawn on f4 but removing a defender from the king side so bishop h7 checking h8 and queen h5 there is a a lot of pieces attacking on f7 so this is obviously very 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 sharp but what does what does white have okay the threat is knight f7 but even uh, that is not clear that it's a threat because threat because the bishop is king so I don't know too many pieces here but I don't see anything like what can white do yeah well let's see 
if there are, there's something concrete or just it looks scary. I mean, okay, I don't know, taking on f4 is obviously an option. Let's say knight f7, rook f7, queen f7, because, okay, I think if knight f7, king h7, there's just nothing there. Okay, maybe knight g5, but that's probably the end of it. Okay, and white remains up in material, black remains up in material. And uh, so queen f7, okay, and let's say queen f7, knight f7, king h7, knight d6. Okay, this is, yeah, this is winning for white. But after queen f7, what can uh, black do? Uh, let's see. Okay, then this maybe looks promising for. Yeah, I don't, I can't see really what black can do, and well, maybe bishop d7, but it just looks not that great. Anyway, so that that means that knight f4, black cannot play knight f4, so he needs to find something else. I mean, just eliminating one of the knights is possible takes takes and now now really there are no threats maybe now knight f4 or something ah, obviously it's pretty sharp so let's see let's see what happens both sides have more than 30 minutes and it's move 18 so they'll definitely need to calculate a lot here not to end up in some sort of forced variation that's bad for them but Okay, pretty sharp. Let's see. Next board, Meister against Birnboim. We had this reversed Sicilian, or also known as the English opening. <coughs> so, okay, something things have changed here, and uh, well, we have this position where it looks like both sides are doing okay -ish. Yeah. So. Black has, let's say, a better pawn structure because there is one pawn island in whites than in blacks, but doesn't really show. As these three pawns are a good central presence that white black is trying to control with the f pawn and the c pawn, yeah. But all black species are well placed, so so are whites. So it looks like kind of uh, balanced here. And it's balanced on the on the clock as well. Both sides having exactly 39 minutes for 18 moves. Board three, Kalinchev, yeah, weaving his magic. So you see, we left off here, yeah, f4, f, yeah, okay, f6, and white played f4. And um, I said black has no problems, and he even queen a5, rook c8. These are the moves we expected, and now rook c3 strange move but you see the problem here in white's position is that he's a bit overextended and uh, any exchanges of pieces as long as rooks or queens are, are left on board will always be tricky because they will let's say always be a threat of some rook c2 for example if uh, the c file is in black's uh, control or if the queen is not on d4 queen b4 going after attacking this pawn so uh, this well, overextension in the center like this, then maybe uh, the pawn on e4 will hang from a queen from b4, and uh, it looks a bit airy, you know, in, in white's position. So he goes rook c3, rook c3, bc, rook c8, c4. Okay, so maybe this was his way to solidify his position and to stop any infiltrations along the c and b files. And now black goes b5 and exchanging everything on b5, queen b2 takes takes. And now again we come to this airiness in white's position. So you see these are kind of advanced pawns but they can be attacked. And compare these to these pawns which are at the back in black's position that are more difficult to reach. And vice versa, this advanced pawn cannot really be attacked but this pawn can become a weakness, let's say queen b4, maybe putting a rook on c2 somehow, maybe pushing a3, getting to b2, and uh, white has things to worry about. So queen c5 check, king h1, queen c4, and now this is the point, you see, for example, a rook endgame, 
is very bad for white okay rookie one just rookie two and losing a pawn and likely even the game because these continue these position pawns continue to be exposed some f5 will happen and then uh, they will be broken up so white avoids the exchange of queens which is the correct decision the queen is good in defending a2 but definitely it's black who's pressing here definitely black is pressing here maybe he can continue with chasing the queen with queen c2 so you see how Kalinchev is having a really amazing tournament here I mentioned yeah he's winning his games just by not doing anything in particular and then his opponents just handing it out to him uh, without being forced to do so yeah so, okay that's that usually happens when the player is in good form you know they say it's a good form or just lucky yeah so good winning chances here for black and on board four okay well well black definitely survived the suspicious opening so after bc5 he played knight d7 okay so maybe that was his idea attacking that uh, knight on c3 so maybe knight a4 was worth investigating here just defending that pawn but white played bishop d2 and now knight c5 and we have the same structure that we had yesterday in the kalinchev game when uh, i said that this central preponderance gives white better chances and that holds true here as well so knight f3 rook c8 but now h4 i think it's really out of place i mean i know it's modern to push the h pawn uh, in pretty much any position nowadays thanks to the influence by of alpha zero but here it's out of place because i mean white doesn't really go to go, go h5 his advantage is thanks to these three pawns against these two in the center so he should have probably just castle and then, and then prepared uh, the advance of the pawns the h4 just i don't know bishop g4 now the bishop is solid on this square queen c1 queen d7 short castle and now bishop f3 bishop f3 knight d4 well definitely not the best way to play for white here uh, bishop g2 knight b3 going after the bishop pair queen moves take on d2 take on d2 b6 yeah black is fine now definitely opposite colored bishops no weaknesses and uh, and in view of the uh, exchanges yeah now this central uh, majority let's say is not very scary because even d4 cannot be played because of the pressure on that pawn on c4 so e3 knight c6 knight d5 e6 knight f4 knight e5 so i think this is just uh, equal position and uh, well i wouldn't be surprised if it ends in a draw so the match is i mean uh, it's going pretty well for the Germans. Uh, Kalinchev playing for a win, uh, and uh, well, Knack on board one. Okay, looks like under some sort of attack, but nothing concrete. Whereas on boards two and four, things are pretty equal and uh, will likely end in draws, but uh, good winning chances for uh, on the other two boards. On board one, okay, anything can happen, but nothing uh, concrete is visible so it appears that the germans and the english will win their matches and continue uh, moving forward uh, so okay we did a we did a roundup i'll just put some game from the s uh, 50 section okay as i plan to have a okay rook a7 has been played by by adams and uh, Ashabalov has been thinking ever since. So, okay, I'll, I'll take a short break now, and uh, when we come back, we'll we'll just continue with our analysis. See you soon.
さんわわかわわかわなかあえてらないカジミさん Welcome back to the live commentary of round 5 of the World Senior Team Championship As you could probably notice we already have quite a few results and、uh, I verified these during the break as I was down to the playing hall and in fact uh, the uh, The game I actually left to be seen here on stream, Adams against Shabalov, was in fact drawn after Rook A7. The move I、uh, said that was one of the possible moves, and uh, well, uh, I suppose Adams offered the draw, which was accepted. I think this has to do more. With the, type, with the character of the position, then we need with its objective evaluation. And the character is that black has annoying threats on the on the king side. And、uh, well, this knight is pretty annoying, the bishop is annoying. So I think Adams just didn't like this. And this being in, in Shabalov's well, forte to, to play these aggressive, attacking, sharp positions. I think that was the reason for, for the draw offer. Because objectively, I mean,、uh, White doesn't risk much unless he blunders something, but humans are playing, not engines, and engines would probably just continue the game. But、uh, this was drawn. And so, were, so was the、uh, game Fleer against Elvis on board 3. We will come back to board 2 in a second. We already noted that Novikov and Davis drew on board 4, and this may. Come back to bite the English team because o k a y on board three it was drawn and we left off in the position after b3 when black played knight b4, one of the moves I mentioned, bishop b1 and a5, and after knight a4, c4 was played. And、uh, here the, the idea is that, for example, if b takes c4, d takes c4, the, that、uh, pawn. Cannot really be taken because there is this move bishop a6 winning the exchange. So Fleer played knight c5, attacking that bishop on b7. Bishop c6, bishop c3 was played now. And after cb, ab, bishop c3, rook c3, queen f6, queen d4, exchange is on e4, rook f8, draw was agreed. Well, the final position definitely is around equal, even though. I would say because of that pawn being on f4, white should be a little bit more careful about it. But okay, it's just、uh, just equal, yeah. And like I said, that draw on board four when the English team had a safe position to, to play on forever with that IQP can come back to, to hit them because. What we have on board two is this rook end game, which、uh, theoretically should be a draw, but it's very, very, very unpleasant to defend. Normally,、uh, it's said that the、uh, closer the passed pawn is to the center, okay, probably not D, but. Maybe ABC. From ABC, the closer it is to the center, the bigger chances to win for white, and that means that the B pawn has bigger winning chances than the A pawn, even though objectively it should be a draw. But there are some really mind boggling details in these endgames. I remember reading at some point some analysis by, done by Dvoretsky. I think it was included in his book, The uh, 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 the endgame technique, yeah, no, no, the manual, the endgame manual, and there was some really very deep, very detailed、uh, analysis of, of how this game, how this endgame should be treated. It's very complex. So,、mm, well, it's it will be difficult, but okay, if Ems manages to draw it, then. Uh, then okay, then everything will be fine. But if not, then maybe they would have wished they would wish they had continued on board four. So the, the match is、uh, one and a half each with the 
the American team kind of pressing this theoretical endgame against John Ems. Let's move on to the next match. Drawn on board one. That was another result that we have. So we had this position after queen b6, which I... And that, just taking on e4 again, it doesn't... I don't like it that much. So rook f1 was played, rook d8, and now d5. Yeah, just getting rid of the IQP and just simplifying everything, yeah. Knight a2, setting knight c3, rook d3, knight c3, queen c4, takes, 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 takes. This could have happened if without the pirouette of the knight, because from b4 it could have taken on d5 anyway. And after rook d8, draw was agreed. I guess black could have played on. I mean, it is equal, but the bishop is stronger than the knight in an open position. But okay, just decided that, okay, not really worth it. On board 2, we have, okay, many things have changed. We left off after knight a4. When uh, when we were talking about this position, uh, we, uh, we said that, okay, white has several plans how to play. Okay, eventually he decided to go knight a4 and go after the pawn on c4. Knight a4, queen a4, a5. Okay, that knight is still strong, and uh, the idea is probably to go bishop h6 and defend the knight. Bishop h3, we mentioned this idea, using the fact that the pawn is not on f7, defending the pawn on e6. So f5, blocking the bishop, but weakening the e5 square. Knight e5 and c5 now. So obviously things are getting sharper now, as black is attacking the center from everywhere. So d takes e5, bishop takes e4, knight c4, so white got the pawn back, knight c2, rook a c1, queen e8, okay, a lot of things happening, c6 now, avoiding the exchange, knight e3, knight e3, so now the rook defends the pawn, bishop b4, bishop g2, takes, takes. Okay, so uh, the position ob obviously simplified, but it still remains uh, uh, well complex enough because white has this pretty strong passed pawn on c6 but that pawn is not going to queen anytime soon and um, uh, black has a solid construction here on the queen side pawn on a5 bishop before which uh, they defend each other so that's pretty stable and um, white's now task is to actually activate the knight but how does he do that i mean it's a bit tricky because black would like to for example start advancing his own majority but uh, for example playing e5 weakens the d5 square and the knight will just happily land there so it's uh yeah it's it's interesting to see how white goes about uh, activating the knight. Still, that pawn I think gives him better chances, but the position remains, yeah, uh, still complex I think. On board three, okay, we had this position where I was saying that it was somewhat more pleasant for White. So White played Queen G3, G5, Bishop E3, Bishop D6. Queen f2 and bishop e5. So, what black did is he uh, ejected in a way the bishop from, from the h2 b8 diagonal in order to activate his own bishop by putting it on d6 and e5. So, um, and the task of guarding the weakened light squares is left to the other bishop. So, rook a d1, queen d6, and now knight c4. And here, mm, uh, black must take because the queen can't just move because then after knight e5, fe5, the pawn of g5 is lost. So bishop takes e4 and dc4. So this is very concrete because normally you would take towards the center, yeah, bc. But uh, then just it's uh, then white would like to exchange this bishop and then that and that would weaken the pawn on f6 but it's simply not possible how to, to achieve that so he took take he takes with the d pawn 
in order to open the d file but that weakens the pawn on e4 so queen e6 queen f3 rook e7 rook d3 rook g8 and now queen f5 and after exchange on f5 i think now we have some sort of a drawish position okay g4 played i'm not sure this was forced but i think in view of the symmetrical structure and this very strong bishop supported by the pawn on f6 i think this is around equalish so this will likely go to a draw and on board four thoralson against miljanic uh, let's see what black this black what white decided after bishop f3 he did not decide to go uh, look this uh, knight d5 and risk this this iqp position he went rook d7 rook e d1 yeah pinning well not really pinning the the uh, the rook but threatening bishop b7 is then the bishop would hang so b5 was played uh, this is well uh, obviously black wants to remove the pawn from a square where it is attacked by the bishop but this putting it on b5 always allows some a4 which would open the a file and after a b5 would weaken that remaining pawn on b5 so bishop d3 intending to double maybe bishop c5 bishop c5 <coughs> rook c5 rook d7 and now a4 knight b6 takes takes and bishop e2 so this is the problem now is for black how does he deal with that lone pawn on b5 uh, maybe he should just go b4 or knight c4 this is always very concrete either white stabilizes the the position and then uh, fixes that pawn maybe wins it or even exchanges it for one of his own and then remains with the past pawn which he can push or black has something concrete and and manages to achieve counterplay and here well let's we we need to calculate yeah i mean maybe before is possible and let's say if cb then rook c2 attacking the bishop uh and if, okay let's say king f1 and rook b2 yeah, and then this pawn is attacked b5 let's say and something like maybe king b7 yeah and then it appears some sort of a, as a fortress because yeah we can give the check let's say king f6 but then uh, let's say rook there knight d5 yeah so the knight is pretty strong and that can attack that pawn or either on b5 or on, on b6 yeah so it appears kind of that black should likely be able to draw this uh, but in the game in fact white black went knight a4 yeah which was knight c4 being the other option as well yeah um, so i mean this allows c4 yeah so what does white what does black do now okay if knight b2 cb now this is definitely an inferior version the knight is not better on b2 than it was on b6 and the rook was better on b2 than it was on c5 yeah in the line that we looked at so i'm not so sure about this knight a4 definitely this is white who is who is trying to to play for when black is fighting for a draw so looking at the match generally uh the draw on board one and then on board two peterson is better against pajkovic thanks to that spawn on c6 on board three, Podlesny Karnason is around the draw, and on board four, Toralson is pressing against Miljanic. So uh, they have two two boards where they are pressing for a win, and well, I don't see why they couldn't win at least one and win the match. Let's move on to the third match: Slovakia against David uh, against Italy. And uh, funny that after B4, Queen C8, the game was drawn here okay obviously i mean the players just wanted to 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 stop playing yeah so uh and and apparently there, there are no anti draw offer rules in this competition so the players are offering draws accepting draws earlier yeah they are allowed to okay what to say
players wanted to make a draw, they nothing can stop them. Godena against Motus. Okay, things have happened here, but uh, it appears that well something concrete is going on. Queen e5 being the last move, so now can black just take the piece let's check that's the most the first thing to check so check here queen f7 attacking the rook here and now it appears that white regains the piece because the rook can't stay on the g file as then it just made and if the rook moves elsewhere then okay maybe just another mate so no need to regain the piece and okay maybe black can try to give check first and then take but it's probably just the same yeah check rook g8 and queen f7 and uh, just too many pawns yeah even if something like let's say queen g5 queen g8 takes 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 probably the simplest is f4 and the knight will never get out and just white wins so this appears to be a winning position for white so rem remember what i said don't underestimate godena don't look at the clock when you're playing him so white will win board three ortega had this very pleasant iqp against dobrotka and he has been pushing and nothing really has changed he imp has improved his position okay and uh, well uh, just pushing for a win here so this is like continues with the same stable advantage that he had from earlier on and on board four okay uh, well what happened with all those knights so uh, we had b5 ah okay and here black played c5 instead of taking or knight c5 yeah b a6 cd4 knight d5 knight d5 cd queen d5 rook e1 putting pressure on e4 rook e8 rook b4 uh, the idea is to take on e4 and then d4 is king and now queen c6 but here white definitely has the initiative because black is still underdeveloped and uh, there is pressure on many points in black's position so uh, definitely looks good for white so okay just uh, irrelevant how good this is it's better for white for sure and that means that the italians will win the match because they have three positions where one they're definitely winning godena and they are next ortega is playing safely for a win in this iqp and borg also has this initiative that looks very 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 good for him so they will win the match against slovakia and let's check the uh, local team of alkaloid and obviously this has something has happened which is i think it's a transformation that i don't think white should have allowed but well let's see what happens so i, I when i was in the playing hall i just saw georgiev play the move h4 and i was wondering actually okay f6 to limit the bishop and now rook d2 I was wondering whether this putting the bishop here and allowing let's say knight d4 rook d4 was worth it because then this reminds me of, of a famous game played by botvinnik when uh, in an iqp position and then karpov implemented the same plan against Pasky, but there were light pieces on the board as well uh, when he just started pushing on the king side and created a an attack on the king side uh, as black's pieces were tied down to the defense of the pawn on d5 yeah but then again uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, black is not forced to take on d4 yeah maybe can just go 95 as in the game and in fact after rook d2 95 uh, threatening knight c4 for example yeah but Maybe that's not that scary. Black White decided to take on e5 and after if f takes e5 to go queen f3. So no longer an IQP and this I think should be problem free for 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 black. 
he decided to push through immediately d4 takes takes queen d3 and now looks like okay some something like drawish yeah king h8 rook e2 queen d6 yeah rook e4 rook e7 rook f4 rook e5 yeah this looks like uh, i think somehow that maybe maybe uh, this exchange on e5 but even without, I mean, it, I, it just looked like that black should be able to hold that position with an IQP. Uh, so likely this will be some sort of a draw. And that means that uh, with the draws on boards 2 and 4, the only chance Alkaloid has to win the match is on board 2, uh, sorry, uh, 3. And here we had this position after Queen G3 when we said that white was winning a pawn. Black decided to give the pawn on h6, queen c5, bishop h6, knight e8, a4, f6, bishop c1, queen e7, queen a3, queen f7. Okay, I don't think that this was really, well, necessary to allow the, the queen to get active on c5. Rook d6, bishop a3, bishop queen g6. Okay, king h2 defending against bishop h3, queen g5, queen a7 going after the pawn on a6, rook d7, okay the rook was also hanging here, yeah? so queen a6 check on f4, king f7, okay this is by now should be winning two pawns, especially as this one is a passed one, yeah? queen c6, another pawn, three pawns, even though these are doubled but still knight d6 bishop d6 cd a5 rook h8 okay this is just winning for white just nothing really black has on the king side and white is just pushing so this is winning and okay well then good good match strategy in a way yeah that uh, well uh, it was an obvious strategy trying to push and win on board three where the uh, grandmaster was playing a 1900 rated candidate master so it worked out nicely so Alkalit will win this match and keep uh, keep up with the with the leaders let's now move on to the s65 section let's see what's going on there and uh, what happened in this with the attack white head we were in this position queen h5 that where we left off and black took on e5 f takes e5 and played f6 so getting rid of these uh, of the pawn he takes f6 knight f6 queen g6 and e5 so it's funny you know how how i mean white has so many pieces close to the black king but they're all kind of awkwardly placed yeah the knight cannot move the bishop cannot move and the queen well can't move either because it needs to keep defending the bishop so rook d f1 bishop g4 queen d3 okay white is trying to extract the, the the pieces so the queen is moved first and then first and then the bishop wants to come out to g6 yeah so rook c8 bishop g6 king g8 threatening maybe to take yeah bishop knight h7 take take king h8 bishop e4 queen e7 uh, okay so what black did is he okay managed to to uh, push away push back the the pawns, uh, sorry, the, the the pieces white head on the king side, and just the pawn up. So, pretty good, promising position. Queen g3, bishop h5, b3, b6, queen h3, queen d6, g4, bishop g6, queen g2, and rook f4. Okay, so it's a pawn up, and uh, well, definitely black playing for a win here. If he manages or not, we will see. But being a pawn up, he's as well. And not real danger safe position he he will has good chances let's check board two we said that this was some, somewhat equalish and uh, white made some progress by pushing c5 and maybe gaining some space but i think it just uh, continues to be equalish yeah the point being that queen e6 rook e6 white cannot take on f5 because rook d4 wins a piece thanks to this pin on d file 
So I think, uh, well, after the exchange of queens, black can then lead to play g6 to defend the pawn, and again, it's not quite, it's not clear why, how white can progress because the bishop cannot move from d4 as the pawn on d3 will hang. So, mm, looks around drawish, yeah. Board 3, okay, Kalinchev, our hero. So what happened is that, uh, yeah, here he, he made the move that I thought he might, going still for the rook endgame. h3, takes on f2, rook c1 check, king h2 and rook e1, and white loses the pawn. So you see, you can just win so easily in less than 30 moves, <laughs> playing the Marozzi bind, especially when your opponents are so helpful, yeah? So e5 was played, take, 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 rook f4, rook d5, rook f4, so pawn up, but more importantly is that he has two extra pawns here. And normally two extra pawns against one side pawn is a relatively simple win. So h5, I mean, I think I even remember there was some uh, Fisher games when uh, he had three against one on the king side and the white had a, let's, uh, well, I think he was black in that game. I think it was against Minich, uh, but uh, not entirely sure. So he had three against one on the king side, three against one, and uh, White had a one passed pawn on the on the uh, queen side, and it was fairly straightforward win. So rook a7, king f7, a4, h4, a5, g5, a6, rook a5. It's simple because uh, the rook just, black's rook is so uh, much more active as it controls the pawn from behind and can be used also on whichever rank is necessary. Yeah. Uh, and black can just uh, advance. Yeah. Move the king. Okay, not there just because exchanging one pawn is not good. But just uh, f5, king f6, get the pawns out of the rook's reach and then move forward and just start advancing. So rook a8, king e6, a7, <coughs> rook a2, king g1, king f5. Okay, the important thing is not to blunder some check, yeah, and then, and then the promotion. But as long as this is, uh, black is a bit careful, it should be uh, a win. And on board 4, again, this was equalish, but things have happened, obviously. Uh, so where were we? I think we were somewhere here, yeah? Knight f4, knight e5, rook b5. And now black went for d5. Okay, he could have just sat there, but he's using the fact that the pawn is defending the rook and uh, white cannot take on d5. And maybe this just poses some problems to, to white, yeah? Maybe just rook b5 was a bad move. Well, okay, rook b4, dc. Yeah, well, psh, this is just really, really strange, strange blunder by white. So d4, c3, queen c2, knight c6, rook c4, e5, d5, knight a5, takes, takes, knight e2, queen d6. Rook d1, bishop f8, rook d3, take on a3, take on c3. Okay, just a clear pawn up for black. So, well, surprising blunder by by white, and now black should win. Yeah. But in view of the of the promise of the winning position on board 3 and, and good winning chances on board 1, Germany still has good chances to, to win the match. So, it's... Uh, it's still a good development for them in spite of this very strange blunder by Curler. Um, let's move on to the match England against Belgium. John Nunn doing the usual massacre in the Sicilian. We left off after uh, d5, so he went knight e4. And bishop e8, queen h3, he takes f4, knight f6. Okay, and this is nice uh, in case of gf6 probably just bishop f6 i think yeah bishop f6 rook moves and then maybe just queen g7 i don't know uh, 
queen h7 or maybe just check king f7 and now now just take maybe i don't know okay this looks devastating anyway i mean can't survive too long so queen e5 was played but now bishop f4 okay bishop f4 knight g4 queen c7 and g3 so okay this is just elementary because white regains the piece and he has a free attack not having sacrificed not even a pawn so knight d5 gf4 king g8 f5 h5 f takes e6 okay uh, knight f4 okay this is a cute one line okay and mate so knight f4 knight f6 check g takes f6 queen g3 check king f8 rook f4 queen e7 queen g5 and even though we have not no result here i'm pretty sure black resigned so it was a uh i would say massacre in the sicilian in the best traditions of john nunn and uh there was an expected draw on board too between gur machtich yeah. sorry about that when uh, after f3 draw was offered and accepted and chapman won on board three that means the england team has won the match in fact we had queen e5 here we saw this position c5 knight e4 bishop c4 rook d6 f takes e4 rook b6 knight b6 bc5 okay this is just clearly winning too much material for for white okay queen and a piece for two rooks and uh, black resigned and the game is still ongoing on board four and uh, no this is not okay yeah this is it and in fact well what happened here is that now actually black is no longer lost after being lost for so long in fact i would say that black is even now better yeah because he can start pushing and the white pawns are still in the back so okay yeah i mean even if if um, povach would have lost england would have won the match but exchange turnaround here as, uh, as this definitely was and should have been winning and should have won uh, for white yeah the, the position that he had but uh, we we looked at something here queen h5 if you remember queen e7 was played d4 f6 takes takes bishop g5 yeah this should have been just devastating but bishop a6 rook a e1 queen f7 queen f7 rook f7 rook f6 rook a, bishop c4 okay white black somehow survived to an end game but rook g6 maybe you could have just taken yeah i don't know takes takes check and then just collect some pawns i don't know king there h4 but okay rook g6 was played king h7 rook f6 okay this is just this can't be good this is just bad i mean really i'm losing to tempi to go rook f6 takes takes king g6 go back this okay now now he messed it up already okay just some inexplicable waste of time i i, I don't know what to say okay but w what's clear is that okay england will win the match uh, on board two against belgium and uh, okay black already won in kalinchev another win so after king f5 actually uh, white resigned he barely has a move yeah in fact just maybe simply king f4 uh, and king g3 will decide everything so germany will win also their match most likely uh and that means that the favorites will continue winning so let's go back now to the s50 section and check what's going on with m's okay a lot of exchanges so how did this happen so after rook c8 white played rook e5 uh the point being that uh, you know uh, if, if we make a scale of desirability where we want the rook in similar positions number one is behind the pawn 
number two is sideways and number three the least desirable is in front so what white is trying to do is he's getting the the rook sideways so the idea is that after rook c3 he can play rook e3 and defend that pawn um, similar is if black gives a check rook c1 king g2 rook b1 and then rook e3 will happen and the standard let's say plan in these positions is that white wants to secure his king side let's imagine something like f4 h4 so the rook, rook defends everything and then the king marches to the king side to support the passed pawn and together push it forward the rook also is very good at cutting off the black king so the black king cannot join the defense on the queen side so rook c2 g4 maybe um, actually probably black uh, doesn't have time for h5 because then rook e1 and rook b1 is coming and then the, the bishop is the, the rook, mm, pawn is supported from the back so rook c2 g4 this is usually good as uh, maybe g5 will be played yeah or just some expansion on the king side because it's stopping h5 for, for black which is the desirable pawn structure for black in this rook end game so rook b2 rook e3 h5 yeah uh, the less pawns on the board the more chances black has so g5 fixing that pawn on, on f7 for example and also limiting the movement of the king so if um, black wants to move the king he must play f6 and he does so gf6 mm, i wonder i wonder well i mean h4 definitely not because takes takes gives black a passed pawn and uh, f4 also doesn't look too great because the king is cut off on the along the first rank but on the other hand i don't know let's say takes takes and then the the king is going to be stuck okay or king f7 the king can never really move out of the prison and let's say something like but then again the problem for white is that he cannot entirely secure the queen side because once the king moves there let's say if this pawn is on h3 rook g2 will attack the pawn on g5 and if the pawn is on h4 rook h2 will, def will attack it there but maybe this is possible because then rook e4 can defend the pawn and that would be ideal so maybe this uh, this is was i mean i don't know let's say f4 maybe this was kind of an alternative but then maybe black shouldn't take maybe f4 pawn should be kept alive and then when the king goes to the uh, king side then either the h pawn will be attacked or the f pawn okay Com complex thing rook end games yeah so white took okay gf6 king f7 rook f3 defending the pawn g5 h3 g4 takes takes rook d3 king f6 king g2 king e5 king g3 king f5 check goes back rook b5 so it appears that black's active uh, defense and the fact that he simplified uh, the position on the king side and reduced the material is actually uh, working quite well because how does white make progress so the rook, the rook is now in front of the pawn yeah cutting off the king and um, uh, but black's rook is very active the king cannot move and now what white can try is but this is not really possible for example to give up the b pawn for the g4 pawn and then somehow maybe cut off the king but the king will not leave further than the e file so that's not not really uh, possible so in view of MC's pretty good defense here i i must say uh, very nice defense it, this looks like it's going to be a draw and that will be a great result for the english team because they were on the defensive yeah especially after that drawn board four when they could have pressed for more so this looks like a, a drawn match let's check montenegro against iceland what happened here we had the position after knight g2 black played rook c8 rook c2 just trying to double and 
secure that pawn on c6 and now f4 this is uh, an attempt at counterplay because likely black didn't just want to stay passive and uh, allow white to okay, defend that pawn and then f look for ways to uh, uh, look for ways to well, improve his position uh, here for example knight takes f4 will likely be met by rook take check king h1 and now something yeah uh, maybe okay if check f3 but maybe queen d3 attacking the rook and then if king moves check and likely some perpetual yeah okay white didn't just ignore the pawn rook fc1 queen g6 queen b5 rook f7 queen e5 now there is a threat of knight f4 so fg hg queen f5 but this just looks bad for for black okay the knight is free to come into the game now queen e2 i guess exchanging was also possible but okay decided not to queen e2 g5 trying to stop knight f4 but the knight goes to e3 queen f3 queen c4 again white just avoids exchange of queens on principle even though that should also be fine but okay rook e7 rook d1 king f8 okay this looks winning for white i mean the king is weak there are pawn weaknesses and there is a strong passed pawn so all these factors together uh, make it winning for white i think so white should win here board three Podlestic against Arnason. We said that this should be a draw, but in the meantime, Black somehow won two pawns. How had that happened after g4? Bishop f4 was played. gh, rook h3, rook takes, takes, and rook check, and rook. In. Oof. Okay, so white just miscalculated. Rook g3, takes, takes, there. Rook f3, king g7, king h3, king h6, rook g3, rook d2. Yeah, some sort of a tsuk yeah. If the rook leaves the, uh, the g file, then king g5 comes. So king g4, now check, king h3, rook f4. And now that pawn is lost. So rook d3 takes a5. Okay, so... Uh, this should be winning for I mean maybe what happens after rook d7 needs to be checked and uh, okay but there is this check check and rook g7 just defending everything yeah and okay g2 also okay king, king could have gone on f3 but still so a5 was played but okay uh, not sure if it's such a great idea because okay maybe white wants to actually to go a6 not to take and then just uh, go after the a7 pawn but pretty far-fetched I mean even if he takes that pawn likely he will lose the b pawn and the rook will come from from behind so they should be losing okay that that just seals the match for Iceland it's a very surprising turnaround should have been just draw there and Toralson against Miljanic after knight a4 why didn't go c4 went through k2 rook d5 king f1 knight b6 king e1 king e7 check king f6 rook b7 knight c4 so we are just going around in circles but white is still trying to make something of the bishop and the majority but for now black seems to be active enough yeah attacking that pawn and let's say something like b3 then just probably 96 yeah. so uh, okay this white is pressing but okay in view of the winning positions on boards 2 and 3 Iceland will, will win this match the Italians go then a had this position queen e5 knight h3 king h1 he went okay 
I'm thinking G2 was also okay, but okay. Bishop B7 check, F3, uh, F6, Queen E3, Knight G5, Rook E1, Rook D7, Knight E4. Okay, just it's like two pawns up, and uh, uh, like I said, he, he will win. Knight E4, F4. But now, if rook d4, what happens? Just what's his idea here? Maybe he misplayed it, yeah? Maybe he did. Okay. Sometimes Godena makes mistakes in time trouble. Should have been an easy win, but now it doesn't look like it. Okay, let's see Ortega. He okay. He probably will win a pawn. Rook four check will happen most likely, and then f two will fall or g four will fall. This still should be winning for black. And on board four again some dominating. Rook game for white. He is like what? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pawn up. Protected past pawn and. Uh, but this, well, okay, I should be winning, but. It will take some time. So Italy should still win the match. Yeah, uh, even though it should have been easier with, with Godena converting in a more. say convincing way uh, and the fourth match we were looking at Kirill Gergiev Gdansky it's a uh, rook f3 has been played <coughs> so we have this rook in game and the question here is what happens after rook d7 immediately or after a check so let uh, rook d7 but no okay a3 is hanging sorry I mean okay a4 rook B3. Okay, this is a draw, and that means that Stanoyevsky should win against. In fact, he likely won all already after this queen h7 check, and it's just game over. Let's say king g5, and I don't know. Maybe you can play for mate, maybe you can play for queening. So Stanoyevsky won, and they won the match. So well done for them. So, a lot of draws today, but uh, also some short ones, but some, f well, fought out draws. And the critical one still being Kaidanov against Ems. White is maneuvering. Group B8. Maybe the chance is, for example, to go with the pawn to B7. And then threatening a, a check. That's one possible plan. But the pawn is too far, and like any like um, uh, well, b4 maybe okay, king f5, and then uh, rook b3 check will push the king back, and then the king can maybe go back to, to g7 and uh, secure against possible checks, or maybe just to go towards the pawn. But that re will re require some calculation what happens. Still, some play on. I mean, White will definitely try, it's nothing to lose here, but objectively should be a draw. So, okay, so as, as the match is stand now, uh, let's check the standings, uh, if they all go according to what they look like on the boards. I'll just check the standings, and what we have is that Uh, USA would, will draw against um, England that means they will both have 8 points but Iceland won and they will be leading with 9 Italy will win and they will be on 8 together with Iceland and England and uh, Macedonia Alkaloid will win and they will be 1 point behind on 7 so it will be crowded at the top 
and in the S65 section and then just check that okay Germany wins England wins so let's see the standings there I think in, uh, Germany will keep the one point advantage yeah so uh, okay there's also Slovakia and Finland there on six but Germany will be on nine uh, England will be on, on um, actually Germany will be on ten uh, England will be on eight Israel will remain on seven and Finland and Slovakia there are also other teams Kosovo and France and, and Bel okay on six so that also we'll, we'll see what happens depending on their matches so again we'll need to be get become crowded there as well so let's check if you have anything to say in the chat uh, okay Bobby Fischer is definitely playing in this tournament and uh, he uh, well I think is probably looking at the games from somewhere having finished his own game of life uh, okay Deepak thank you very much uh, thank you very much for your kind words uh, but I don't quite get the point of what an energy at this age uh, if you're referring to my age or, or somebody else's I don't know I'm not that old by the way uh, otherwise I would have played in this tournament you know <laughs> So uh, well, anyway, thanks for your for your kind words uh, for the analysis. Um, okay, MC is thinking. Uh, let's check the other games. Okay, okay, maybe we can just skip to S fifty and see what's going on. Sixty five. Sorry, what's going on there? Okay, so still a pawn up for Knack against Grunfeld and um, but uh, double pawns here but this I think should be winning this I think should be winning because just black advances king g5, rook g3, king g4, h3 and so on and I mean why is winning because even if we get some some exchange, pawn exchange I mean sorry rook exchange and pawn endgame then this extra side past pawn will decide the issue because black can run to the other side of the board still some some play it will happen but this is winning for black uh, Meister will also win okay I don't know how that happened that was really a uh, equalish position but something happened rook b1 b6 rook f5 Okay, BC, Bishop C5, Bishop B6. Okay, this is just something black, white, I mean, white won a pawn, but this somehow still should have been drawn, or at least, I mean, it's very concrete. Depends who gets to attack first. So A4, Rook A3, A5, G6, Rook A, B5, King G7, check, takes, Rook D1, King H2. Okay, this, a lot of moves have been played. What is this? Uh, what happened here so king h2 rook d6 rook b6 takes takes rook b3 b7 king g5 <coughs> okay this is just just winning yeah i mean the king just comes the point is that rook, the rook cannot leave the the uh, the b file and uh, white should be able to just fend off these attacks just maybe just put the pawn on g3 and prevent the king from approaching the pawns so wow just uh, well uh, great for, great turnaround for germany so they are definitely winning the match even with a big score okay here maybe they will just maybe just 3-1 yeah because here it still looks like it's winning for black King g2 being played but uh, in spite of the opposite colored bishops this bishop is doing a great job blocking the d-pawn and supporting his own pawns as long as white uh, black doesn't allow some sort of blockade on the white squares should win 
it will go on for a while that's for sure but uh, so Germany will win two and a half one and a half or three one so uh, that's that's it okay England already won two and a half half and uh, game still ongoing okay oh wow black even won a couple of pawns and okay now it's two pawns up so uh, so after, I don't know c5 and black is winning so it will be a big victory for England three and a half even though Povach was losing from the start so wins for the favorites there going back to s50 game Shabal of M's we are King e6 played by black there's a huge difference on the clock 50 minutes left to finish the game for Kaidanov and 16 only for M's but it should suffice uh, okay a practical chance for for a player in this situation with white is to draw out the game as far as, po as yeah as, as long as possible play for as long as possible hoping that black uh, spends the time that he has left and then may try something when when black has little time uh, even though well what exactly to try we will see we will see uh, so let's move on okay Arnason already won against Podlesnik already won so we had this position after a5 I think where we were looking at just a second a5 was played okay rook e5 uh, rook e5 rook d6 oh a6 okay this was the plan but now okay but if if rook d7 uh, okay maybe rook, what's happening if rook d7 let's say check uh, king g4 check moves king g7 rook g7 ah maybe this is a this is a tricky thing so takes takes and now let's but no I shouldn't really I mean the idea I, the, the idea I had was to go like this but shouldn't really work so so now maybe just go back here I don't know strange stuff but for some reason a6 rook e2 rook d7 rook a2 rook c7 okay now just no counterplay and just no point okay collecting more pawns and white resigned so yeah uh, so win for Iceland and they they have already two points and Peterson okay this looks like a, some sort of mate so Peterson won and uh, they won the match three one as on board four there was a draw they agreed to a draw in the position uh, here knight c4 bishop c4 and it was again agreed drawn probably seeing that the match was won so white just fixed the result so 3-1 victory for iceland and they lead the tournament let's see what happened in the godena game uh, so what happened we were we, rook f1 no we were here fe4 rook e7 played strange why not rook e4 which is a double attack rook e7 bishop d3 i don't understand this why why black allowed white to keep two extra pawns queen a5 bishop b1 queen e5 king g1 f5 Still getting one pawn back, but rook f1, bishop e4, bishop e4, queen e4. Well, if anything, I mean, I think black should have kept the queens on the board. I mean, uh, both kings are weak, but this just means that it's important that white's king is weak as white, and white cannot just calmly uh, convert his extra pawn. That means that black will always have some sort of trouble. Yes, black should also be careful, but he was losing anyway, so 
the more confusion there is on the board, the better for black. Because the rook end game takes takes rook a1 seems again winning for for white. Did I say never underestimate Godena? Rook a7, king comes in the center, a5. But now this just okay, some there will be some suksuang, I think. Rook a4, maybe h3, g4, and the king will be forced to leave the defense of the e4 pawn or there is also the threat of just going to the, towards the queen side so Godena will win I said it yeah after ups and downs but he will win Ortega transposed to some rook end game after winning the pawn on f2 so it was rook f4 check king g3 bishop f2 king h3 c5 bishop d4 king g3 bishop c3 king e6 king e5 yeah this looks winning too because the rook is just ideal defending the only weak pawn yeah attacking the pawn on g4 and cutting off the king yeah so white black will find a way to break through to the somehow to the to the uh, queen side so ortega should also win that will be already two and a half and borgo should also win i guess uh, some exchange here rook e6 or rook a6 or something okay they should also be winning so three and a half victory for for italy and two and a half victory for uh, macedonia alkaloid so the only game actually we're checking that may somehow change is the M's uh, Kaidan of M's, which should be a draw, but it's still ongoing. It's not clear what White can try here. Maybe, but it's not possible to, to now somehow shift the rook to the side defense because if he manages that, then it's winning. For example, put a rook on f4 or just win the pawn. So rook b6 cutting off the king some king g7 will be played now king e7 black just basically just waits because white is tied down the rook is tied down to the defense of the b4 pawn the king is tied down to the defense of the f2 pawn and uh, black just waits so it's we will see if white tries to do something yeah but it's difficult to see why well, i mean what um, well we will see 48 minutes on white's clock so maybe he will just run it down and this circle around for ages yeah i mean make moves and uh, push b5 then make more moves but then like Black's play is rather simple, so probably the game will continue on White's time. 12 minutes left for M's, so yeah, we'll see. Let's see some comments. Okay, still no comments. Um, no comments. Okay. So yeah, more or less, I think we are we know the results of the uh, of the uh, of the crucial matches. So everything is clear in the S sixty five section, only the exact results. And here again, everything is clear. We just okay. Black needs to make sure that doesn't lose here John M's to hold the draw so uh, to keep uh, the Americans within striking distance but as we said it's Iceland now who is leading and they will be playing on board one tomorrow so and they will likely play 
USA if they haven't played them already just let me check okay they have played no they haven't played USA so they will play USA tomorrow it will be an interesting matchup so we will see Rook b6, black still thinking. I mean, tricky thing is in, in, in these situations is that, I mean, okay, black has a choice of several, let's say at least two, okay, if we are talking, if he doesn't want to move the rook. Uh, okay, he went king e7. So you're thinking, do I go king e7, do I go king g7? And you can't calculate till the end, yeah? Both look good, both look normal. And you can't decide, and somehow players get trapped in this uh, dilemma. You know, both things look good. You can't calculate through the end to make a mathematically informed decision. And time goes, time goes, ticks away, ticks away, and uh, at some point you have to make the move, and uh, that's how some people end up in time trouble. M shows king e7, yeah, uh, everything's okay, king g7 was also okay. <coughs> so how does black actually, uh, how does white actually try to create something? Hard to hard to say it's a how I mean uh, the only transformation in the position that can happen is that white takes the pawn on g4 and then gives up either the b pawn or the f pawn. But either case it's a draw because giving up the f pawn cuts off the king, yeah, and the black king is close enough to come to the queen side to control the past b pawn. And giving up the b-pawn, okay, leads to a theoretically drawn rook endgame because the king is in front of the pawn. So if somehow white could cut off the king on the e-file and taking the g4 pawn might give some chances, but even that is a draw because the pawn is back on, on, on f2 and black can uh, use the front so-called front defense by giving checks and offering rook exchange for a drawn rook and pawn ending. So even that, but even that cannot be achieved. Yeah, so rook b5, now likely king f6 again. I think we had that position here, yeah, just with the pawn on b3. And yeah, now we have it with the pawn on b4. So king f6 will happen. I just, uh, hard to see what what white can even try here so really excellent defense by ems really job really well done saving the match and keeping the english team still in contention for first place in the meantime let's see if they have some official scores okay godena godena black thinking but he should have done that earlier Ortega uh, against Dobrotka king e5 rook d8 was played yeah just king goes to e3 and then maybe rook f3 king f4 or maybe king e2 rook d3 and then the king passes over to the c pawn c4 also can be played yeah and Borgo rook f5 yeah, winning that pawn or just forcing the rook to come to a, a7 and then the e4 pawn will be one two pawns up. <coughs> really a straightforward win. And uh, this is, I'm pretty sure this is finished, b6 draw. So we can just 
circle around. Okay, maybe actually in the S65 we can check the Germans. Okay, C5 played by Polak, he will win. Let's check the Germans going on. Uh, so, King G6 here, King G5, Rook G3, King F1, H3, A4, A5. Okay, now it's even worse for, for, for White because some Rook pawn in game with Rook G2, Rook G2, H G2, King G2. It's even more hopeless because white can't even create a passed pawn here. So a5, rook d2, h5. Yeah. So maybe it's... couldn't he? No. Okay. Uh, rook d2, h5. Uh, okay. White can start. Maybe give some checks. King g, rook d5, king g4. Then, but then the problem is that once the rook leaves the second rank h2 becomes a threat and the king can't get closer so that's the the problematic part uh, let's see here yeah this is as i said game over basically because the king cannot approach the pawns because this is a check so knack will win maester will win kalinchev won already and here okay black yeah, well, what I was saying, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, Black should have won if he didn't allow this blockade, but now he allowed the blockade, and I, now I don't think it's winning anymore. Now I don't think it's winning anymore, as uh, uh, White can hold the defense, yeah, the bishop is controlling the queen side, and the king is dealing with, like, any ideas that black may have on the king side so this should be a draw now it will go on definitely but still it could be a three and a half win for germany and Polak likely won okay c5 either white is thinking or he already resigned so uh england will likely also win three and a half okay let's go back to the game kaidan of ems so what happened was rook b5, king f6, rook b7, king g6, just moving around. Uh, yeah, difficult. I mean, maybe, maybe white can try pushing the pawn to b6, yeah, and then taking on g4. Wait, wait, wait. Rook f2 will happen. And then, but no, then moving the rook and just from the side, but the rook will just come back and that's that's not very good. Um, and if, for example, goes rook b8 and gets the pawn to b7, black's king will stay there on g7 and just uh, maybe then take the pawn. Yeah. Then it is a win because rook f2 and uh, uh, the rook will just move and the pawn will promote so that means that once the uh, the pawn is to on b7 black will have to be ready with the king on g7 and when the pawn steps on b7 he should be able to play rook b4 to defend the pawn on g4 and that is a draw so, okay rook b8 king f7 let's see what try what white tries yeah Let's see here what's going on. Ah, okay, this was this is going okay. Povach won after c5. Uh, also, Meister won. Okay, this position, rook g7, that we just saw. So it's already 2 0 for Germany. Uh, Knack is still playing. So, rook d2, h5, rook h2, king f4, rook d2, rook e2. I mean, these positions are never holdable by passive defense, but here, unfortunately, neither are they winnable, I mean, drawable with active one, because there is no active one. So probably just the plan is to go h4, maybe king f3, then rook g2, and just... Uh, that's pretty much it. Even without the help of king f3, just let's say h4, uh, rook g2, yeah, and then uh, just tie the just winning some pawns or the, the pawn endgame after exchanges on g2 is easily winning because 
black collects all the pawns. Okay, let's see how it continue, how it finishes here. Can I repair it? This will okay. Uh, still I'm going, but like I said, this should be a draw because there is no breakthrough or at least no visible breakthrough for for black here. This one will go on for sure, but it won't. Af doesn't affect the outcome of the match. So, okay, white started pushing the pawn b5. Black will wait. King g7, probably just wait. And uh, the point is that when the pawn steps on b7, white and black goes rook b4 to defend that pawn, and uh, and it should be a fortress. But then maybe there are. I don't know if there are some tricks there. Uh, I mean, <laughs> just um, there shouldn't be. Let's imagine some scenario that uh, king goes h4, g5, f5 there, and then some rook d8, and when uh, rook b7, rook d7 check. I mean, it probably should be on e7, rook e7 check, and some pawn in game, yeah? But the pawn in the game, he can't get to the g4 pawn. So even that doesn't really amount to much. So we have all the results even here officially. Iceland won 3-1. Uh, let's see, Italy. Okay, still playing. Okay, Borgo won. And Godena still playing. So what was played was rook a4, h6, rook a1, h5, rook a4. And it's some sort of a tsuktsuang, yeah. If king g5, king e4, if king e5, rook e4, check, yeah. And if the rook moves, then the pawn advances. So, uh, an elementary win. Ortega, still thinking, but he will find a way. So, let's see. So, king. King, okay, b5, okay, it's black to play six minutes. We will see. Uh, what happens? Yeah, I see the playing hole, it's still ongoing. Uh, very few games left, but uh, in the foreground, you can see uh, Kaidanov and uh, NMs still playing. And there in the back, okay, on board three, I think. Ortega also finished. You can see the uh, the arbiters uh, approaching board three in the match. Uh, Italy Slovakia, so that likely ended in a win for Ortega. But either way, the Italians won the match. Well, the question is whether it's three one or three and a half half. So. Or are they? Okay, the players are still at the board, so maybe just some, some maybe some small incident or something, yeah. And no, no, the game is still ongoing, even in fifteen minutes. So, okay, King G six, played by John M's. Let's see. Okay. Ah, okay. So he gave up the the pawn. Uh, king g5, king e4, h4. But now it's just really elementary. I mean, uh, the king just goes to support the passed pawn and to just promote. Probably simplicity to take. And then sadistically defend. Sorry, defend the the pawn on h2 and then just send the king towards the the queen side let's see ortega king e4 played yeah this is just uh, maximizing the the uh, the activity of the pieces the king will come to e3 c4 most likely yeah and then uh, maybe rook f3 check will happen king e2 maybe the f that pawn can be taken and 
should be really not too difficult now let's go back king g6 now white is thinking in the meantime let's check s65 knack uh, so h4 was played rook d2 king e4 okay so he king rook f2 king c3 and now rook g2 will come so this will be a win and this is okay b3 played why was b3 played probably with a draw offer otherwise okay no maybe the, the idea is to actually go king b3 bishop b4 and then go after these pawns okay that's that's maybe something so maybe white should not have allowed this yeah this is a nice trick okay so maybe black will be awarded after all i don't know why why actually white sent the king to the to the uh, king side but then again had he kept the bishop on b3 it would have been diverted by a4 bishop a4 and king d5 yeah but then just bishop b3 again and it's a fortress because uh, all the squares will be taken and how does how does black break through but now looks like black is winning I'm going after these pawns okay likely a 3-1 win for germany here let's go back to <coughs> the ems game white still thinking let's see godena okay he took on h4 ortega rook d6 was played doesn't change much let's go back to ems why still thinking 40 minutes left okay he can really uh, wreck the dining experience here for himself his opponent and us here watching the game so i'm waiting for the official result in the golden again but that has finished i think because i can see on the on the live stream there is nobody on board too so that finished some time ago already yeah so that's a win for sure ortega still playing though but it doesn't affect the match this affects the match yeah if it's a draw it's a draw on match but if it's not a draw then that would be a huge win for usa but it should be a draw so how does it go i mean that's probably the only thing that black should be careful about once the pawn threatens to be on b7 black should have a king on g7 or h7 and a rook on b4 to defend that pawn and that's pretty much it but so he's perfectly ready yeah b6 first he starts with a king and if b7 rook b4 and that's it so but maybe let's see if b6 uh okay king g7 maybe now to take on g4 yeah take on g4 take on f2 and now let's say rook somewhere yeah but okay really it's not something that should worry black yeah and the skin comes well not even that okay king g7 black is ready b7 rook b4 uh, let's move on to s65 so black even put the king on b2 
Rook F2 was played, and now I really expect some Rook G2 to happen. Yeah, or maybe even more statistically, Rook C3, and then just go Rook C2, go back, collect B3, collect A4, and have two passed pawns. Yeah. Black will find a way. Okay, 12 minutes left, but I'll find a way how to wrap it up. So, and here, okay, King B3, Bishop B4 was played, yeah? Yeah, now it's just winning, just all these pawns are going to fall. Nice trick, yeah, well done, Michael Peretz. Michael, sorry. Nice trick. Knack still thinking. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, here White is still thinking. Ortega still thinking, but eight minutes left. So actually, like I said, the only game that may impact the result of the match is this one. Kaidan of Ems. Because the other games that are ongoing, irrelevant how they finish, the matches have been decided. But here it depends on the result. So it will be good to see. And most likely we won't be getting any, any guests today because, well, a lot of games were drawn and, uh, well, we uh, likely, even if some people were invited, maybe they declined uh, to come. So we will have to postpone having people here on stream to for tomorrow so from what i can see in the stream okay his ms is playing just played some king f7 i think from what i can see uh, from the board i could just barely see it because kaidanov was moved to the left so i can see the king moving to f7 just making a move on the queen side that le at least means that we will get some moves, yeah? Let's see. Uh, okay. Golden now officially 1-0. Ortega. Okay, he played c4, got the king to e2. Like I was saying. And now he'll likely give some check like that one it requires probably some calculation because black will white will take on f6 and then maybe go after the g5 pawn but um, it's some sort of a tsuk because like uh, what does white do yeah i mean <laughs> he can't move the king i mean maybe king h3 yeah because if the rook moves then then check and winning that pawn on c3 so maybe king h3 is the only move but then maybe uh, i'm not sure if well some king f3 is a, is an idea but okay uh, because there's this funny idea let's say let's just show it okay king f3 here and let's say you look somewhere and now f5 yeah, and if gf look h4 so uh And if the rook moves, let's say there, it no longer attacks the pawn, and then just white, co uh, black collects another pawn. Yeah, and is in time to to go back. Yeah, and defend it. So some sort of a took some for for white. Let's see yeah. what he plays. Yeah, let's see here what we had. White still thinking. Let's go to Knack. Okay, so you see he went to Rook G2. And Peretz just collected everything. Yeah, this is great. Okay, I mean, uh, White probably can just start pushing, but 
that pawn is not going to go much further. I mean, it will go to d7, but black will block it yeah, here. And maybe there are just too many pawns to... to deal with the army, bishop h4 and just uh, too many pawns yeah, like three pawns up for, for black so let's see rook g2 white is thinking let him think, let's move to here, king g7, white is thinking ok Ortega, Dobrotka Ortega king h3 was played ok, and I'm curious who, if he goes for king f3 and f5 idea Okay, I'm, uh, let's see if this is rook f3, king g2, rook c3, if this is actually winning, rook f6, and now, yeah, this should also be just really uh, not that difficult, yeah, because, let's say something like here, rook f5, c3, rook g5, c2, rook c5, king d2, and there is this threat of rook c3, and the problem for white is that the king is cut off and this pawn, pawn will never go much far, far, very far, but okay, that's another way to win, so let's see here what happened, okay, so we had some, some change, so this is the plan I mentioned, so the pawn is on b6, and now white takes on g4, takes on f2, king g5 and now the idea is that okay, if let's say uh, black goes through b2 then to get the king to uh, the uh, towards the pawn and the problem black has is that he can't follow because when the king steps on e7 b7 is played with this typical trick of rook h8 and then the pawn cannot be taken because rook h7 would win the rook on b7 so how does black defend here uh, how does black defend here? Maybe he should apply the. But how does he do that? Uh, there is this thing called the side defense when you he's checking the pawn from the side, but he can't do that because the rook would be attacked, so rook g8 would, would be played. So how does that? How can he apply that? defense so hmm. hmm this turns out strangely let me check so with b6 was played so maybe maybe this was trickier than I thought maybe he should have started with rook b4 to allow this chance, yeah. Rook b4, and uh, and now, yeah, there, this, this, it's not a, it's not an option anymore. But king g7 allowed this, yeah, king b4. So it's not, it wasn't it wasn't irrelevant what he started with. So rook b4 was safer at least, I mean, we have to still see if this is losing what we have on the board, but, okay, they finished, they finished, so we will have some result now. Come on, Kevin, Everton were brilliant in the first half, you know that means nothing. I mean, yeah, I mean, I haven't checked the score, but I'm pretty sure they will lose, so, and then it appears that maybe England will lose here too. Uh, let's see yeah okay so what I'm saying is that maybe it wasn't it wasn't uh, uh, irrelevant how black started so rook before was definitely safer because it did not allow this chance but this now already what's going on Let's say if king h7, ok, 
Okay. And then, aha, then the problem is this rook b7, king goes there, rook c7, and then b7, rook check, and queen. So that loses. And, uh, no, and maybe they're still playing. Maybe they just got new score sheets because they crossed move 60. So, no, they seem to be analyzing actually. Yeah, they seem to be analyzing. So everything looks finished. Wow, so if, if Kaidanov won this and it appears to be so, then massive win for USA massive massive win for USA beating the direct competition and uh, well uh, staying equal with Iceland and then they face Iceland in, a, in the direct duel uh, agree the draw well Kevin I don't know how they agreed the draw maybe Everton would have liked to agree to a draw but that's not very likely either so uh So I don't know. Uh, I mean, okay. Well, probably in a few minutes we'll have we'll get the moves, but it appears that it's just what we've got. Okay, we got rook b two, rook b seven, king f eight, king f six. Yeah, now, okay, let, let me just refresh because this is showing me. Okay, Ortega, what did he, okay, he, he went for the line I just showed, yeah. C2, but somehow it went with the, why he, okay, he will look, look at 5 for some reason. Why C3, look G5, ah, okay, so look at 5, C3, there, there. Yeah, now, like I said, look, C5, King D2, threatens Rook C3, and that's an elementary win. Ortega wins and here what we had is this position where uh, okay black can try to keep going to the I mean checks don't help because the king is just going to b8 and if something like king e8 king e6 king d8 there is this problem so, it, well, massive win for USA. Wow, amazing stuff, yeah? What should have been a fortress? Black just uh, inverted uh, the moves. He could have started with rook before king g7. One was losing, one was drawing. I also didn't realize that, that this was losing at first sight. I saw the idea, I mentioned it, but I didn't realize it was actually uh, winning, yeah? But in fact, it was so. Uh, so yeah. Everton one one. Well, why am I not surprised? Uh, so. Yeah, so unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, okay, unfortunate. Not unfortunate. This is like already players' fault. I mean, you have a drawn position. You you must know. I mean, you must draw it. Yeah, and. Uh, if you don't then it's your really your fault okay so crucial stuff yeah crucial stuff maybe even crucial for the whole championship because now let's see the scores uh, I mean they I mean yeah USA winning the match Iceland winning the match and England losing the match that means that they are two points behind the leaders and uh, one point behind Italy and uh, unequal points with uh, Alkaloid Macedonia so it's uh, well it happens what to do it's okay massive win for USA let's just make a final check of the games in the S65 section and let's wrap up this session for today Knack still winning as these pawns will be collected. I wonder why he didn't take on b3. 
So this was the position he went through king a3. Okay, probably just being sadistic, something like this, likely. Um, or maybe just he's guarding against rook f6. Um, but still, winning this is. What happened here? Why did? How did he lose the pawn? Okay, he after bishop g3 played h5, takes takes, bishop h4, d6, bishop g5. Yeah, and now the problem is that black wins another pawn. So it will be a 3 1 win for Germany. It was three and a half win for uh, for England. And in the S50 section, massive win for USA against England, two and a half, one and a half. Three one win for Iceland, three and a half, half win for Italy against Slovakia, and two and a half, one and a half win or, uh, uh, for North Macedonia Alkalid against against Poland so we will be signing off now this was uh, longer than usual but we had long games and important games so we had to stick around thank you for being with us today I hope you enjoyed the commentary uh, I will see you tomorrow same time same place have a good